Greetings, pro wrestling fans, and thank you for joining us at the Pro Wrestling Look Back Podcast. I'm Nick, and I'm sitting here with... Don King, a.k.a. King Don. That's fitting. <laughs> Welcome back to the Look Back Show, ladies and gentlemen. We're here. King of the Ring, 2002. Yes, yes. Ready to look back and give you all kinds of, you know, our thoughts and everything we do here at the Look Back Show. I hope you've been enjoying the roundtables, but we're here for the Look Back Show. The sounds of Jamie Noble, eh? Yeah, we, you know, that's kind of a theme that we do, and we try and get our, you know, pick a random ass song that we can start the show with that isn't necessarily related exactly to the show, but it works here, and, you know, as per usual, if you don't already, guys, check us out on Instagram and Twitter. Follow us at PWLookBack on both of those. Give us a subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, YouTube. If you want to send us an email, you can do that at ProWrestlingLookBack at gmail.com. If you want to get yourself a t-shirt, we got new stuff coming on the way, so look out for that. Yes, yes. Teespring.com slash Pro Wrestling Look Back Podcast. I think actually, actually it's just Pro Wrestling Look Back. You don't need the podcast on the on the, the merch website. Uh, if you want to get in contact with myself or Donovan, it's at S-C-E-L-S-A Salsa. And my Twitter is at just Don 44 I think that's pretty much it, Don, as far as our stuff goes. As always, you know, like we always said, hit the five stars. We appreciate that. Comment, subscribe, send us a PM on there. Let us know what we think or what you think of the show and any ideas for future look back shows. We're always taking ideas and, you know, let us know what you think of the show so far. Uh, I guess with, like I said, Don, with with all the, the goody stuff out of the way, let's get to the show here. The yeah. look back show, buddy. The meat and potatoes. The meat and potatoes. So like I said, King of the Ring 2002. This was a big one, a big one for me in the sense that I, I own it. Yeah. I yeah. actually have the DVD and I've, I've seen this one. I mean, I didn't remember as much of it as probably I should have, but that's, <laughs> that's typical for me on, in the, in the look back sense. We know you're the, got the better memory of the two of us. That's for <laughs> sure. I end up taking more notes usually than I need to, but yeah, this one, like I said, King of the Ring, 2002, June 23rd, 2002 from Columbus, Ohio at the nationwide arena with 14,198 people in attendance pretty epic show yeah especially for one man's career in particular oh absolutely what do you think for you is one of the big standouts like we'll get to obviously our memorable moments and everything that we do on the look back show later tonight but Mm -hmm. or today or whenever you're listening to the show but what's something that that stands out to you right off the bat as far as the overall feel of the show after watching Um, it in in its entirety jeez you know what man um I'm not going to get so much into the the guys and the yeah, girls no, on the a, show, but the um the, at the entrance way, the gigantic chair. electric chair. Yeah, is that kind of what it's supposed to be like an electric chair, or is it more of like a king's throne too? I wasn't sure. I you never know what? knew. It probably is more of a king's throne, but in the uh, previous year of 2001 was the first time they introduced that chair, and it had and it was like an electric chair, but also like as as a, a kind of king's throne, a bit of both. Then yeah. Then yeah, no, I that's the one thing I remember the most, mm. I think, about this pay per view is before I mean, like I said, I've seen it before in the past, I just didn't remember a lot about it, but what I would have been able to remember is that big ass chair. I, I, I can totally agree with you there. It's it's something that's gonna stand out probably later. But um for myself, I think honestly, man, it's the stories. Uh, every match in this card or on this card that I at least what I've gathered mm-hmm. had like a good story. Yeah, t- told it, there yeah. was there was no just kind of matches for matches. Yep, you know what I mean. Not that that happens too often, especially back in two thousand two. But mm-hmm. I just felt like the storytelling on this show was on on better than on par. It was above above par. Yeah, no, I can definitely agree with that too. Or Looking... low, lower than par. I don't know if you want to use the golf reference. <laughs> technically, it'd be lower. But no, it's uh yeah, there wasn't that just one. This is just here to kind of be a filler, and that's it. Like everything did have. Everything Re- yeah, reason yeah. to it. Actual story yeah. to, to, to most of the matches. They showed uh the Times Square sold out at the beginning. Oh yeah. That blew me away. I mean, I've seen pictures of it before, obviously, when we did the look back for WrestleMania seventeen and other stuff, but just uh, pretty it's not something you'd see nowadays. Yeah, man. The the people just, you know going the crazy fans going wild and yeah. That this, was a cool place. It's somewhere I wish I would have got to go. Been oh man. Yeah. 
It would have been amazing. Was that something they did for every pay-per-view back then? Yeah, man. I feel like even uh, to our listeners, like if you go and listen to some of our other ones, I know even like we did an Armageddon randomly. And yep. I, think, I believe that they were showing clips there. And it was very often, yeah, man, in this 2000 era. Well, this is probably one of the, the heights for yeah. the company. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, or at one of the highest points for the company, if not when they were feuding with w, WCW mm-hmm. or going back and forth in the ratings war. But um I, I wrote down a few little things like I always do kind of just before we get into the matches in the open and everything. Again, I think I say this on every look back show that oh. that has this, but no, it's not what you're going to say or okay. what you're thinking. All right, all right. Excuse me, geez. Um, it's it's the black ropes. Oh. I love yeah. the black ropes, man. And I I think it's because I've said this before too. It's, it's because I know they're not coming back because mm. they're too hard to see. Yes. And they get blended into the crowd too often. And you can't really see the distinguishing three ropes. So it's not something that's ever going to come back, but I just, I think I like it so much because that's what I grew up with. Yeah. And every pay-per-view when I was a kid watching wrestling, they were, all had black ropes and mm. Raw was red and SmackDown was blue. And then they were, whenever it was a joint pay-per-view, it was black. Mm. Whereas nowadays, if it's a joint pay-per-view, they're white. I'm not a huge fan of, but I'll take the, the like the white now yep. on the big pay-per-views mm-hmm. instead of being white all the time. Yes. Because when I, I jump back into wrestling, it was, you know, all white ropes everywhere smackdown raw pay-per-view everything had white ropes i I remember when raw came back and they brought the red ropes back how Mm -hmm. excited i was to have the colored ropes as fucking stupid as it is i guess just a rope color shouldn't matter that much but i i it matters to me and i i don't know the black ropes stand out i hear you that does matter i I feel because even thinking to that red uh the white ropes on a monday night raw just doesn't look very appealing to me it bugged me yeah. i remember when i got back into wrestling yeah. in 15 and then the, the ropes were white and i'm going huh so when they switch them back to red and i would imagine that's how it will be going forward but yeah um i like i said I, the black's not coming back because of the visually it's 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 probably not the best visual thing on tv but i love it and we, we, well, we got to br- bring it up <laughs> it's crazy that you say that cuz like man this isn't something that i even really uh like thought about in us watching the show. Yeah. And now that you're saying it too, like, do you, does he, do you find it hard visually on you too? Or do you, are you thinking just in general? Like, cause no. I was okay with it. Oh like, no, I don't, I don't find it hard visual. I just think from like a, a production yeah. standpoint in the sense of like people who are trying to, to, I don't even know how to word this. It's a tough question. I mm. did. I think WWE, this is the best way I can probably word it. WWE wants you to be able to see the ropes clearly Without a doubt. Whereas I find that they're hard to see back then. Yeah. But it doesn't bug me. Yeah. I just, they're more difficult to see because the crowd is general wrestling fans, black t-shirts. Like it's, it's pretty common. So it's not, I think it's just the standing out factor. Mm, Gotcha. Yeah. That's, it's totally not something that I really paid close, close attention to. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it doesn't bother me either. I like it. Yeah. Um, the one that you thought I was going to say, obviously, holy Mm -hmm. fucking pyro. Oh yeah. Because... It was, I don't know. It's We're going to have to watch a bunch of pyro things back to back because I don't know what's bigger now because anything from this era just looks like a friggin' Canada Day event. Yep. It's insane. And then it leads right into the first match with the smoky oh, yeah. smoke everywhere in the arena. And we talked about this, what, last week? Yeah. Off air, totally just, you know, talking about reminiscing. And, yeah. And the smoke in, in that first match of the night usually always had that smoke in the arena. So that was cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, and if there's not anything else from you as far as like kind of just generic stuff, I love the pay-per-view format. The fact that they have a King of the Ring pay-per-view. Yes. Um, we'll get more of my thoughts later on that tonight, but I do, I love that the fact that this pay-per-view is called King of the Ring. See, this is, this is an interesting talking point actually before we dive into the show. Mm -hmm. I, you know what? So I love the King of the Ring idea and I love it being its own pay-per-view. But at the same time, the fact that like WWE took it away for a little while or got rid of it, like the name of the I'm pay-per-view? almost I'm almost okay with that too because you know what, King of the Ring to me shouldn't be, um, like a I don't want to use a SummerSlam or a Royal Rumble as an example. It shouldn't be like a like a backlash. It's it's not something I want to see in Once the year? in the yearly cycle because there was a point I remember this even back around this time where I was like, you know what, I wonder when they're gonna kind of cut it off almost Mm -hmm. you know what i mean because to have it be such a consistent thing like a backlash or an extreme rules or whatever name your pay-per-view um it it can kind of take away almost from the the specialness of of what it means to be the king of the ring and to be the winner that's exactly what i was thinking as far as where you were going with that it kind of 
it takes away the credibility from a, from Credib- being exactly, a king. Yes. You know what yeah. I mean? It, it it makes it it kind of dilutes the system in the sense that you've got too many kings now. Yeah, exactly. Because every yes. year there's a new king, if, yeah. if unless the same guy's winning, which that could be something. If you had a multiple year and then multiple year winner, mm. like somebody won it three years in a row. Yeah. Then you know, you could play off that kind of storyline and really yeah. build up somebody. But no, I totally agree with you because doing it every year is just well. Then how many kings by the end of by now, everybody would have been king. You know what I mean? If if we're going to do it every year. Yeah. So, and the, yeah, I don't know. I totally agree yeah, with that. Yeah, thanks for clearing that. You, you broke it down nice for what I was trying to say there. That makes That's exactly what I was trying to say. Yeah, there's yeah. too many. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, open of the show. A nice little video promo package there uh, showing yes. all the kind of, all, every single king Most. of the ring <laughs> <laughs> champion. <Most. laughs> no, you get into that, Don. <laughs> so I think what they actually did in this video is I think they started with, um, I think they started with Bret Hart. Like, I don't think they actually even went back to the, you know. Was that 94? Because I think the first one they showed was 94. Okay, so no, it was, it was definitely probably the 93 version of Bret. Okay, my bad. Cause, was so, there a 94 King of the Ring tournament? There was, yes. Okay. So, Brett won it two years, not back-to-back, but in a row. Two years, yeah. because Two he won, tournaments in a row. Yeah, he, so he Brett wins 91, and he won 93. And I think they opened with, I want to say, 93. Okay. And then yeah. the second one we seen was Owen. Yes. And then with, they got into... Okay, 94, my bad. I, didn't, I forgot Owen was 94. Dude, and you know what else? Did they show 95? I don't think they did. Because you know who was 95? King Mabel. Then no. I don't think I remember seeing King Mabel on no, that No, definitely screen. not. Because it, right. it's what you said. What did you say to me? <laughs> so the one thing I picked up on right away is that they were showing only the guys who basically were elevated to the main event. And had their career skyrocketed after winning. Yeah. Not the guys who won the King of the Ring and then, you know, Didn't, fl- floundered. Uh, yeah, like a Mabel maybe or a uh, Billy Gunn or a Ken Shamrock. Exactly. So, yeah, they showed Brett, Owen, Austin, Hunter, skipped... 98 and 99 which was Shamrock in 98 Billy Gunn in 99 yeah, and then they showed the Kurt Angle year 2000 makes sense Edge 2001 and they, then, did they even show Edge? yeah I think they showed they did, a, like a, a clip of him spearing uh, Kurt I, I think oh okay was, and yeah. he faced Kurt in the finals I didn't even realize that like, yeah Kurt, Kurt made it to the finals the following year I know Kurt was trying to do the double that would have been yeah. cool that would have been cool so yeah it was a pretty sweet promo video and a good way to yeah. intro the show and then like we talked about they opened the show with I didn't. Well, we didn't talk about signs everywhere galore, as per oh, usual yeah. on the look back show. And yeah. fuck, man, you couldn't even see people. Yeah, no, <laughs> just Bristol board everywhere. Yeah. Triple H everywhere. You were talking about the Triple H signs. A lot of Triple H signs. Yeah. Well, babyface Triple H at the time too, right? Definitely, yeah. Um, and then they kind of they cut to like I said the pyro, and then it was it was a quick start. The show pretty much started right away, which I like that. Right? Are you yeah. a fan of that? Or do you uh, want a little? Do you want a little more commentary? I sometimes don't mind the commentary, yeah. like like show like uh, uh, get the camera down mm-hmm. beside the commentary teams, yeah. and and show them down there. Hey, it's Jr. here because I don't even know if we got that. I think it was like very quick, very, very brief. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we might as well get to uh, match number one. Should we make this a theme on the the look back show? Oh hell yeah! Match number one. Match number one. King of the Ring. We have. Uh, Y2J, Chris Jericho, taking on Rob Van Dam, the Intercontinental Champion at the time as well. In the semifinals of the King of the Ring Tournament. Yes. Because these guys, as we'll get to later, had double matches. Well, the winners had to, to wrestle twice on this show. Mm-hmm. So, What about you? What are your... Uh, give me some opening thoughts other than the smoky arena looking fucking well, wicked. For one, I definitely got a shout out. Gotta, gotta, gotta. And I feel like if you listen to our stuff on Van Dam, I might say this a lot, but this gear by Van Dam, the Tiger Stripe style damn fucking sick this isn't something we normally do on the show yeah (laughs) but don take a look at my notes here for a second and i want you to read the very (laughs) first thing i have written down for this match maybe my favorite rbd gear ever (laughs) so there you go i couldn't agree with you more because that tiger stripe rvd singlet that he rocks is well one memorable with this pay-per-view because i've like i said i've seen it multiple times because i have the dvd Mm -hmm. But just so RVD. Yeah, man. Is it spray, like the airbrush kind of? yeah. Airbrush yeah. paint job on there. The only other one I think that maybe rivals this, mm-hmm. and I correct me if I'm wrong as far as when he wore it, but the one that had the big dragon on it at ECW One Night Stand when he fought John Cena. Ah, uh, okay, okay, yeah. Because that one's fucking wicked too. Yeah. 
And he's obviously RVD's one of the best, like he's got some of the best gear ever in yeah. general. But this one totally stood out to me. And I'm so happy you said that because like I said, it was the first thing I had written yeah. on my sheet <laughs> yeah. for this match. So, You know what else I, that reminds me of this gear too? I believe, I'm not 100%, but I believe he did wear this gear at the Invasion pay-per-view. Shut the hell up! <laughs> the man himself? Actually. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> Um, how about the camera flashes all throughout this match? I mean, we'll get to the more of the match stuff itself, but I just, that's something I picked off, picked up off right at the beginning because I mean, fuck it's 2002 and everybody still had a flash camera for one. Yeah, man. Which it's nice. It really like it adds, I miss it. It adds to the show so much, especially for those big moves, uh, big moments, entrances. That should be, it should be part of the new wrestling, uh, etiquette that when you go to a wrestling show, you turn the flash on your phone. I like that. So when you take a picture, it has to flash. Yeah, that should be a thing. <laughs> I don't know if it would flash as quickly as there was one did back then, but still. I, I miss that whole arena being lit up for yeah. two seconds or a split second whenever there was a finisher or, you know, any type of, you know. Yeah, man. It, it, that Something like that just, you know, brings a smile to me. Like, just even to think of, like, those huge moments, Van Damme in the air or Austin hitting a stun or anything. Like, exactly. Rock you know. bottom, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, how about the red tips on Y2J? <laughs> This so the red tips Jericho reminds me so much of him. I'm surprised he didn't have the longer uh, goatee. goatee because that's what I think of. With totally, the red tip. but he had the goatee. He did to like yeah, but not the braided. Uh, no, twisted one was that. I think he grew this one out because the one you're thinking of, you're probably picturing Shawn Michaels, Chris Jericho, WrestleMania yep. 19, which was the WrestleMania that followed this paper. Well, not followed, but that same year. Yeah, definitely. And I think he started the red tip. I was going to say it reminded me of. Uh, double belt undisputed uh champion jericho as well because i'm okay. pretty sure when he won those that's what he had that's what he was rocking yeah his gear was nice too very yeah. og jericho shiny and yeah i don't know very pro wrestling you kind of had the knee pads pulled down and shit a little bit it looked it looked different it looked very i don't know what the word is but like new japan type style very like uh not too flashy yeah it was definitely like a classic jericho yeah, yeah. and just the way i noticed like his boots and everything it just looked natural it looked like a guy who was going to a real mm -hmm. not again i don't want to you know what I mean? Yeah. It didn't look too showy. Yes, yeah. Too perfect. Like, we'll get to later when I talk about Eddie Guerrero's gear and uh, that kind yeah. of stuff and laces and that kind of thing. But uh, me and you talked a little bit, because I don't know how much we'll spend on every match, but we talked a little bit about the size and the similarity of the sizes between the two of them and then also the conflicting styles of wrestling, although the fact that they're the same size wrestlers. Yeah, man. I think it was uh, Jim Ross who brought it up on commentary and yeah. said, you know... These guys are so well matched as far as, you know, size goes, speed goes, strength. There's not really one who, you know, out beats the other in that department. No. But like you said, yeah, man, when it comes to St moveset, stylistically, you probably couldn't have guys that are more different. More different. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you have some of that Japan flippy stuff that Jericho does, but yep. majority, especially at this time, I feel like Jericho was more tough guy building on the... the Tough guy is probably the wrong word to use, but you know what I mean. Like more like a Triple H, more like at the time. You know what I look at this, Jer like, uh, and I don't even know if this is gonna make sense, but like a wrestler's wrestler was Jericho. How I looked, how I looked at his style. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And and RVD was a little more risk taking and a little more, you know, outlandish. Yeah, R RVD. I mean, he's always been that unorthodox move set guy. That's another thing I had written down. Yeah. Just RVD's move set is so fucking good, man. Yeah. All the flips and the kicks. Like, I love the kick off the top rope, but he lands on his feet. Yeah. Like, he kind of side kicks you. Yeah. It's like the cover of the, the Money in the Bank um, DVD or one of the DVDs. He's on the cover kicking Doing somebody. Air kick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and then he did the Rolling Thunder. I think he probably did in this match. I can't remember off the top of my head, but. Uh, an interesting move he did bust out in the match too was the uh, the split leg and moonsault. Yes, which I thought it was interesting that Jr. brought up that normally he finishes he's finished people with that move, but he didn't finish Jericho with it. Not at all. And we talked a little bit about the hop up on the rope, the hop and the hop and spin. <sighs> Great man, fuck that that Van Dam. Yeah, when he goes up for the frog splash or yeah, mostly for the frog splash. Yeah, mostly say. for the frog splash. But either way, he kind of just he doesn't get outside the ring on the other side of the ropes. He stays in the ring and just pulls himself up in one eighties. Turns in the air. And what did I tell you? For anybody out there playing the wrestling video games, that's the one you want to pick when you're creating a guy because that's how you're getting up the ropes the quickest and that's how you're gonna win some matches. No. But this is we're going back a ways to the SmackDown versus Raw days yeah, for, yeah. for myself. So yeah. I can't speak for the new games and how, you know, the two K <laughs> They got the Van Dam set in there? Exactly. I don't even know if it's in the game, but um, 
it was a very competitive match, fast pace, like we would expect with two guys like this. Heel Y two J though, yeah, pulling the Daniel Bryan choke. Yeah, he used his uh his he un- wrist tape. Yeah, yeah. he un he undid his his wrist tape and then threw it around RVDs and he choked him good. Yep, he did. <laughs> Obviously, that wasn't something back then that, that you weren't allowed to do because we all know about the Daniel Bryan firing in, in 2011 or 12. Or yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Roughly around yeah. that time because and just doing a choke with with a guy's tie. Um, I don't know. Obviously, worth bringing up because it, it became such a big deal in the company later mm-hmm. doing something like that. And definitely is something, I feel like something that you don't see uh, too often just throughout many eras of wrestling. You yeah. don't often, I don't often see that a guy using that. It's a very old school tactic, I feel like. Totally. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, because I said I, and I'll probably, I watched this paper. I've seen this pay-per-view many times before, but we've all talked about my memory on this show and the amount of wrestling I watch. And sometimes I don't remember everything. I got to be honest with you for a quick couple minutes here. I was bought in thinking Jericho is going to win, even though I mm-hmm. fucking knew that RVD won. And I knew RVD faced Brock Lesnar later that yeah. night, obviously. But I'm sitting here thinking, oh shit, he might win here. He might win. You know, you, you never know. So they bought, they, anytime I obviously know the match outcome and then I can forget about it for a second and yeah. get bought in and forget yeah. is that's a good sign. Definitely. Obviously. Definitely. Um, I don't remember how they got to it, but a nice five star finish, five star frog splash finish. And it was kind of abrupt by Van Damme. Yeah. But I'm trying to remember what the spot was leading into the five star. Um, so leading in. Okay. Well, I remember this. So we had, um, we had Van Dam go for like, uh, he went for like a hurricane Rana. Yes, and uh, Jericho caught him, it put him brought him walls. down into a walls, which I thought I had to bring that one up because that was it. Almost looked like he was going to give him a Styles clash for a second. There. Yeah, yeah. Because exactly. I looked, I'm like, oh, and then no, okay. okay, and then into the walls. That was a nice transition. Totally. Um, I believe this, the twist got into. I think it was the turnbuckle that Jericho had exposed earlier in the match. Yeah, that's exactly. Which right. actually like backfired on him because the ref was dealing with it, and RVD had had tried to get a pin earlier in the match as well, and the ref was trying to put the the turnbuckle back together and then ended up coming over and only getting a two count but yeah sorry yeah no and i i feel like um wasn't it the turnbuckle that when van damme launched jericho into it that's what kind of led to him getting up to the top rope and then hitting the the five star yeah so i think maybe i just missed that turnbuckle spot and that's why it felt so abrupt but yeah so rvd wins with the five star frogs excuse me five star frog splash and a decent amount of time in this match. It was uh, 14 minutes and 32 seconds. That is a decent amount of time, especially for the opener. But we talked about it during the show, too. Awesome opener. Really, really, really good choice for these two guys to go out and open the show. Yeah, looking back, you know, at the yeah, card. That's what we do. I wouldn't have done it any other way, man. This was a perfect, oh, perfect I, pick. I have that all over my all my notes as far as the whole card. Tonight. Yeah, yeah. I thought the, the placement of the matches on this entire card... I'll get to it later about some of the stuff maybe in the main event. But other than that, I thought that everything on this card was was well placed and in, in, in a well well done spot. Um, you want to talk a little bit about this attack, the post match attack? That we oh, had? dude, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up because I almost forgot about it for a second. There you go. So uh, we had uh, Jerry the King Lawler coming into the ring to interview Rob Van Dam after, and he's got him there. And you know what? Speaking of buying in and forgetting about things, I didn't see this coming at all. Actually. No, I totally forgot. And again, I had seen it before too, but it made sense because once he started beating him up, I was like, yeah, I think I remember him selling some stuff in the Brock Lesnar match later. Yeah. So. so we had uh, Jerry Lawler interviewing RVD. Van Dam was, you know, talking his shit, talking his talk, saying he would, wasn't scared of a Godzilla or any kind of scary horror monster that Brock Lesnar yeah, could yeah, be yeah. your test speaking on a bigger sized guy and about to do his RVD classic pose and then Y2J hit him from the back and yeah because they got me too because I was going to say that it's cool that he can cut a promo like that and say RVD and then know the crowd's going to jump in yeah. without any planning of that at all I was thinking that too yeah. as he was about to do it I'm like oh this is it's probably just... cool for the fans because they get to join in as he cuts this promo yeah um and then, yeah, Jericho beats the shit out of him. Kind of just gave him a walls of Jericho. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't like he got the chair out and really went to town on him or anything like that. Mm-hmm. He kind of just put the walls in, said, you know, I'm the best in the world. I'm the best in the world. The king of the world. King, is that yeah, what he said? Yeah, king of the world. I'm yeah, the my king bad. of the world. <laughs> king of the world. Um, and then that was it. And we kind of just, uh, we moved to the next segment. Yeah. Paul Heyman backstage with uh, Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. Pumping his wheels, the, hyping him up. The next big thing. You are, bro. <laughs> Tell me it isn't fucking crazy how long these guys have been together. And I know they've parted ways and come back, but yeah. like, that's all I could think mm. when I was watching this was, holy shit, 
this is just like when I watch Raw now. <laughs> and Heyman's backstage with except for Brock's like like it was just I don't know. I had a, a moment watching mm. it, seeing, you know, young twenty whatever he is, younger than me now, probably Brock Lesnar. Yeah. And then picturing, you know, current day, forty year old, whatever how old he is, you know, late thirties yeah. old man not old man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like established man been in the business for a long time yeah no and it, the the contrast of the two of them and it, it i just thought it was so cool that these guys have been together for that long that did cross it crossed my mind too but almost in a different light like i was one i was like you know what i feel like i'm i almost forget some of the pockets where brock was on his own oh totally because i'm i feel like i'm so used to them yeah together well i barely have well we talked about it off air but i mean i didn't watch Brock Lesnar's first match until like live my my first live Brock Lesnar match was WrestleMania 31 so yeah. I, I've never really seen Brock <laughs> without Paul Heyman ever so what eras or what times frames was he not with, uh, um, with Paul like when he came back obviously with John Cena and yeah, that whole deal I mean even during this time like when he when he branched off and became like a baby face guy he oh, okay. uh, like Heyman kind of turned on him and which, hey, if for the listeners listening, if you go back to one of our lookbacks, that takes place. Yeah, that does. Which show, though? I can't remember. Survivor Series. Ah, yes. Shout yes. out to Jag and the whole crew for coming on that one. That's a, that was the, the OG. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Crazy, like I said, crazy to see how long they've been together and just cool. There was something else I was going to say, too, about Brock, but I can't remember at the moment. Um, Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, no, Heyman just, you know, hyping Brock up and then... You know what I thought was interesting about it? Because I, w- I didn't exactly know if the match was going to take place right then. And then Heyman goes, let's go. Like he said that right right now. Yeah. I knew only because of the two uh, matches on the same card. I true. figured if Jericho and RVD are, are opening the show, then Brock must have the second match because they're going to be fighting what I would have thought have been in the main event. But we'll get to that again later. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't remember what else I was going to say about Brock other than oh, I was going to ask mm-hmm. the the baby face stuff that you were you were mentioning there. That was was that pre or post like his whole attacking Zach Gowan and all that shit? Because um, that's the stuff I remember seeing like replays of or highlights of or something. But you know he, what? It's hard for me to exactly remember because they were they were very close oh, okay. as far as the time frame goes. I think he tur- I think he was a baby face, and then. It wasn't he, exactly around for a super he, long time. Yeah, Excuse me. that's what I mean. It was very quick. Yeah. Like the babyface run he did, and then he might have turned again shortly after. Oh, okay. Attack Zach Gowan. And, and then did yeah. that whole thing, because I've seen that, and that's fucking crazy with his mom there and stuff, like Zach Gowan's mom right ringside and him beating the shit out of Buddy with one leg all bloodied up. and Pushed him down a flight of stairs. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking crazy. Crazy that they did that. I'm trying to remember. I feel like maybe the preview for that on SummerSlam 03, and that's where I had seen some of the... yeah. Like the the build? I don't know. I think not, so. Probably. Uh, we can move to the next one, though. I'm going to keep that going through the whole show. I like it. I like it. A local boy. Yes. Test and Brock Lesnar, our, our local boy Test out of uh, Oshawa. And our local, yeah, our local boy just for you listening is Test, not Brock. Because, you know, Brock's kind of maybe technically Canadian, too. I right? guess, yeah, <laughs> he is technically, he, he can he can be the local boy if he wants to come <laughs> hang out in, in Bowmanville and, you know, move the old uh, ranch or whatever the fuck he has out there in Alberta. Oh, man. I don't know how the deer hunting is here in Ontario, though, so maybe, yeah. maybe not, maybe mm. not. Um, I just thought, this was obviously, again, this is the other semifinals match um, for the King of the Ring. Young Brock... Young Brock, yeah, yeah. Just that alone, very I was, different. Yeah, mm-hmm. so different, and so mobile. Yeah. Again, not that he's not mobile now, yeah. just like wrestling, very differently than he does nowadays. No, for sure, for sure. Uh, one thing that I said to you right off the bat was like, "Fuck, man, two bohemians." Like, oh, dude, like test test of strength. At the beginning, yeah. I was like, "That's perfect, yeah. perfect way to start." I, this. The, yeah. between the two of them. I couldn't agree more. I want to see these two guys lock up. Exactly. Me and you have talked before about scenarios where it's a heated rivalry and I don't want to see a lock up. I want to see a punch to the face. Exactly. Or, or like double if, leg takedown. Yeah, or if you're getting a fucking random Rey Mysterio versus uh, Roman Reigns, mm-hmm. I don't want to see Rey Mysterio lock up with Roman Reigns. Exactly. You know, it just doesn't... I want to see Rey slide under his legs and kick mm-hmm. him in the back. Mm-hmm. Or like you said, if it's a heated rivalry, I want to see him walk up to him and punch him in the fucking face, yeah. not lock up yeah. with him. Like AJ and Samoa Joe yeah. we can talk about back in whenever that was. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. this very fitting, I thought. The two big guys. And it really, fuck, man. I, I almost forget like how big Test was too. Oh, like, huge. He was huge. 
One thing though, and I wrote this in my notes, yeah. why does every big man like test that style, that size have to wear those big fucking pants? <laughs> what is it about that, that shape, that body type in wrestling that you have to wear the big baggy leather black pants? <laughs> I think Big Cass is the only guy that's, with that body type to not dress like that. That's a very interesting point that I've never even thought of. Kevin, Diesel. Ma- Diesel, that's what I mean. Taker. And even fucking, what's his name now? Gallows. Gallows. The only difference that Gallows and Diesel have is they throw that little sig- like really skinny singlet. Yes. You know, yeah. underneath their pants, so it looks like they're wearing kind of a muscle shirt type thing too, but they've all got those yeah. big <laughs> baggy leather pants. <laughs> Maybe it's just easy to do the big boot. Yeah. I don't know, but I just thought that was it was one thing I was watching. I'm like, man, there's those pants again. The big boy pants. <laughs> yeah. I guess we'll call them the big boy pants. That's that's quoted. That's uh, that's from our show here. Oh. That, they, they check that on a t-shirt. There you go. <laughs> Get your big boy pants. <laughs> Oh, um, man. but yeah, the power of this match, in- incredible. Yeah. And the power slams, like Dude. legit though, that move, how many, I don't know how many pump handle and power slams and Braun Strowman fucking slams yeah. we saw. There was, there was one in particular where Brock threw Tess to the ropes and then he picked him up like a, similar to a Randy Orton, you know, when Randy Orton does that yep. quick yep. slam. Totally know. I he love did that. that but Vintage like, Randy. Brock got him so high in the air, man, and fucking just whipped him down. It was wicked. I... I don't think you're used to, or most people aren't used to when you watch two huge guys like this, taking this many bumps Mm -hmm. and lifting each other up as much. Yep. Like there was a lot of, you know, picking the whole, the other guy up and and getting all the body weight up in the air and dropping him back down. Mm -hmm. Usually when you get a match with these two guys, you're going to get a lot of the walk and brawl and the big boots and the, in the corner punches and the, you know what I mean? The, the sidewalk slams where it's kind of a, you know, you can get away with the side, you know what I mean when I say sidewalk slams, but. You know, I don't mean like, you know what I mean, what move it is. I know you know what move it is. I just mean, you know what Those I mean? Those type of moves. Where it's yeah. not so power dependent. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, But yeah, a lot of lifts and slams, man. That was like the major takeaway from my watching of this match. No, definitely. Um, Speaking of the big boot too and big guys doing it, I think Test, man, well, I, I don't want to, I'm not just saying this because, but he throws one of the better ones yeah i would say i totally agree you know what with I mean? that. well well connected there's not a lot of visible not that, things going on not that it's exactly a big boot but yeah. i'd compare it to like drew mcintyre and his claymore and how good drew mcintyre yeah. is at yeah. uh, you know executing the claymore yeah definitely um the only other thing aside from we'll get to the finish Heyman is the same like on the outside of the ring, yeah. all the jumping around and everything the holding his face and oh yeah. my god and just everything he does is and not that it's bad, like, oh, it's more of the same shit. No, that's not what I mean. It's just, it's the same. Mm-hmm. It's Heyman, being Heyman. Um, two things. I want to talk about the spot where Heyman tried to fucking... Oh, no, that was in the main event. Oh, we'll yeah, we'll yeah, get to that yeah. later. We'll get to that later. Um, the F5 yeah. that they got to. Yep. And it was kind of abrupt, again, like the first match. I think Tess went to hit the ropes, and Heyman kind of went to sweep the leg. Yes. Tess had looked at him, got the, distracted. The, 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 the famous distraction win. Yeah. Turned back. But it wasn't so diluted back then, so we didn't. No. And it didn't happen in every single women's match like mm-hmm. it does now, or did now for a while. I, and I thought it worked, like, well enough, especially the, the, the speed we're talking of Brock yeah. Lesnar when he turned around just to right away connect with that F5. And then that was it. I wasn't even sure. I'm like, oh, maybe he'll kick out of this one. But I, I, I mean, with them having two matches in one night, I kind of figured that would probably be it. Mm-hmm. But um, you talked a lot about this going into like this pay per view in general. Yeah, was it too obvious that he was winning? Uh, like, and I don't even mean we'll get to the main event later, and obviously him winning and 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 winning his first King of the Ring. But I just mean, like in in this kind of match, like, do you remember not being able to buy in back then at the time because it was like, oh, he's going to the finals at least. He's not Test isn't going to beat the next big thing. Yeah, is that I mean, kind of the vibe that you were getting? Me as a fan back then, yes. But I would say like. When I'm thinking back to it, like I probably didn't necessarily think that um, when it boiled down to like you look at a guy like even a Van Dam and him, I'll, yeah. Like if I was watching this pay per view live, which at the time I did not, but if I was watching it live, I might have been able to even buy into test, even just looking at how big he was, well they matched up and the close calls that they had. Do you think that would have had to do with your age at the time, or you're saying that with the mindset you've got now? Uh, more, I don't. You know what? More with like. The time, everything, everything, the time and the matchup. I think both things might contribute to me looking at it like that. But 
all that being said, too, I know at the time I did look at Brock Lesnar as, you know, a main event guy on his a guy on his way to the main event, probably more so than a test. So, so I might have so, like bought into some of the close calls, but still being like, yeah, Brock. So back then, if there was two T-shirts, <laughs> you're buying the Brock Lesnar T-shirt. Is that what you're saying to me right now? You know what? And this isn't knock. I, this isn't a knock on either guy. Yeah. But back then, I'm probably. I'm probably pass. I'm probably not buying either one of their either, t-shirts. Either one of yeah. their t-shirts. So yeah. I wanted to get you off guard because yeah. I know you wanted me to bring up the t-shirt <laughs> question again tonight on the yeah. show. So I figured I'd catch you off guard with that one. I don't know how many test t-shirts there were. Yeah, neither do in I. general, but I'm sure there was at least a couple. Yeah. It just said test across the front. But uh, the time of this match, it was eight minutes and eighteen seconds. Not too long, but I thought these guys got a lot in that in amount of time. For, yeah, I would have said you know 10 to 12 yeah if yeah. you would ask me eight yeah. seems short but you're right they did get a lot in and it wasn't all walk and brawl it was they like i said power slams body slams all kinds of bumps these guys weren't afraid to get you know sweat it out and work hard yeah definitely it wasn't like you know bump and go home mm-hmm. um but after that we got another backstage segment with our baby face boy bubba ray dudley oh, yeah the famous baby face bubba <laughs> baby face bubba okay there we go i, I don't know it's uh it's a first, man. Other than the one other time me and you watched this this intro, this little segment together, yeah, I f- totally forget that Bubba ever was separate from Devon for yeah. one, and then two Babyface. Like, what did I say to you? It didn't feel like a rest. <laughs> it felt like we. I, I was watching an interview for WWE twenty four. Yeah, or a, or a or, Dudley Boys DVD. <laughs> yeah, three sixty five yeah. Dudley Boy. You know, like yeah. it didn't feel like a backstage during the pay per view promo. But that's not because of the way that Bubba was delivering it it was because i'm only used to seeing him deliver heel promos Uh, and being a dick especially Mm -hmm. i mean i've probably seen bubba more live as um with bully yeah yeah than i have as bubba yeah because i've seen him a couple times in roh be the biggest prick you've ever seen in your life Mm -hmm. so it was quite jarring to see that but um they were basically going backstage to get some opinions and comments and and you know questions answered from some of the wrestlers on Raw because both wrestlers who had made it to the finals now, Brock and RVD, were both on Monday Night Raw. So yeah. they wanted to ask some of the Raw guys, how do you feel about this? And and then that led to uh, Christian and our boy Lance Storm. Oh, yeah. Getting, <laughs> getting interviewed there. That's I, so weird. I just didn't like... How many people wore that Get, get the F Out t-shirt? A few. Like, that was like... Remember, uh, I think it was... I want to say it was... Like Rainier. the WrestleMania jersey? Yeah, yeah. Same idea? Yeah. Because what did I tell you about Lance, little old our boy Lancey there? Yeah, so Nick told me during the show, he's like, you know what? Back at, back then, I probably would have liked Lance Storm. I probably would have got down with them. I feel like back then, I totally would have been a Lance Storm fan just yeah. by the look, the Canadian. I mean, I was, like I told you, I was kind of a little kid that loved the States when I was little. So yeah. I, was, I was always cheering for the USA. And I don't know if, if I would have enjoyed him bashing the USA so much. That mm-hmm. probably wouldn't have been something that I would have got down with. But just his, like, Randy Orton-ish type look and his buzz cut and just his him being a really good wrestler wrestler I would have liked but now thinking back on what I said I wouldn't have liked that he was wearing that get the F out (laughs) t-shirt because I can tell you I wasn't never cheering for a no book guy wearing a Monday Night Raw t-shirt or a Smackdown Funaki number one like that became a thing for Funaki that was kind of like by the end of his career that was a thing but at the beginning they just threw the Smackdown logo on his trunks because there's nothing else Mm mm-hmm but you know what I'm getting at? I, yeah, like wearing the you know WWE shirt. Or, exactly. It's just, and it's not like a big thing that I'm going to get hung up on. It's just that would have been something where I'm like, oh, really? Why are you wearing that? Like, yeah. what's what's why they can't get you a shirt or they can't give you some, I don't know, black tea or I don't know. But I guess they were really trying to push that whole get the f out thing at the time, so it makes sense. Yeah, so Lance and Christian kind of just they're pretty much shitting on America. I thought maybe they had a match coming up later in the night, but they did not. No, we... I, well, do you want to talk a little bit about that right now? The fact that there was a zero fucking tag team matches on this card? Yeah. Um, what do you think? Good, bad? How do you how do you view this here? I It's not even... At least for myself, it's not a matter of like good, bad. It's just strange. Oh, okay. Different yeah. and unexpected. Mm-hmm. It's I can deal with it because I liked this pay per view and I liked all the storylines. Yeah, I would have preferred the the matches we did get with the good storylines I- instead of a random tag team match that had no storyline, just so we can get a tag team match on the card. Like yeah. I'd rather them do what they did. Mm-hmm. But that being said, I still think it's strange because 
I don't know if I've ever watched a pay-per-view, now that I think of it, that had no tag team match. Um, yeah, I when we talk about the story aspect of it, I'm okay with it. And I'm okay with that in general. On a pay-per-view, um, if we're sticking to what's important and what matters, and that doesn't involve a title, or it does involve a title, then that's what it should be about. Yeah, exactly. Because, for example... And I don't even know if this really ties in, but RVD was the Intercontinental Champion. I didn't want to see him, you know, I don't want to see you defend the title just because you have it. Like, just because. You're in this tournament and this is what we're here for. And the name of the fucking pay-per-view is King of the Ring. Yeah. So it's like, I, I feel like that should be a little more important. Mm. You know what I mean? That the, the King of the Ring tournament is kind of the reason that we're all here. Yeah. At least going to this pay-per-view or turning it on, that should be the reason, in, at least in my mind. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, I don't know. Do you want to move on to uh, yeah number three? Number three. I don't have the music on point anymore, but... Uh, oh, your boy. Our boy. Which one, though? Jamie Noble? Mr. Trailer <laughs> Trash himself. <laughs> we had... Uh, Scomi 101. <laughs> Scomi. Jamie Noble and... Uh, Nydia. My girl Nydia versus the Hurricane. And this was for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. Yeah, we don't need to spend too much time on this one, I don't think. I think the music that we gave to Jamie Noble at the beginning of the show is almost enough. That's not enough. almost, or not all, but, you know, almost. Okay, well, we can talk about this quick. For sure. No, <laughs> Jamie's music, dope. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. The story. Stories, exactly. man. This is, what it, this is what it was all about for me, I think. Same, this one. Yeah. same. And this yeah. is what's, like, even a little match like this, mm-hmm. a small match, you know, kind of more or less buffer in between two other bigger matches, has a full-out storyline with... All kinds of backstory. Hurricane getting his, you know, mask taken away from him and all the way from Nydia being the ex-girlfriend who was kind of like stalking him and then getting him jumped and... So many, like, thought. Yeah. And not just, oh, I hate you and I'm going to beat you up. Yeah. It's, yeah. you know, like there was actually... Yeah, it made sense. And her pulling... Didn't she have the mask, like, in her crotch? <laughs> yeah, so she <laughs> she was wearing the mask. As underwear? Like underwear, and then like slid it off and Jamie Noble put it on his face. And then they made out with the mask on. Yeah. And Hurricane came and he got it back. He did get it back. He did beat him up. This well, this was all in the in the promo video leading into this match. But you know what I liked that I kind of thought of while we were watching this? What's that? So Hurricane's the hero, right? Yep. The superhero character. And I mean it's not like he's kind of a vigilante, I guess. Yep. Less more like a Batman. Mm-hmm. Um didn't Jamie Noble give you superhero villain vibes? <laughs> Like, at least I was getting, like, that one random Batman dirty villain that he's got to beat up. The guy who robs the bank in the street. Sure, yeah, (laughs) exactly. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it had that comic book-y feel to me. At least, you know, more than, I don't know, what's something else? Like, they when they did that Stardust and and, and what's-his-face against... uh, Oh, it, yeah. You remember that? The arrow and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, and they yeah. build and Neville and all yeah, that. It was the yeah. comic book. At least this has like a the villain and superhero yeah. style and the whole storyline with the girlfriend who's bad too. And I yeah. I liked that. I thought it was very comic booky. That's a that's a cool point, yeah. And yeah. I agree now, like thinking about it too, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um we we it would be bad if we didn't bring up how fucking awesome Hurricane's gear is, no? <laughs> I love it. I can't yeah. I don't know if I could speak for you, but uh, I love it. Like the bright, bright green. I yeah. like this one when he uses that rather than the dark green. Yeah. The really bright, kind of almost like a highlighter green. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just had to shout that out. And then there was a couple like really good, there was a really good clothesline, yeah. a really good back suplex, and then that neck breaker oh off the God. top rope yeah. was insane. Hurricane so, with the neck breaker off the top rope. And yeah, the, the balance he had to keep because he actually started on the outside of the apron climbed his way up and I think Jamie Noble was trying to like suplex him first into the ring Hurricane huh. kind of punched back got on top of there and then hit and, the neck breaker and they kind of like did a 180 like they were facing like their chests were facing the inside of the ring yeah and then they jumped and landed on their backs so like their feet would be in front of them it was very strange the way they not strange bad strange like you had to make sure you did that you didn't uh, leave a foot wrong put a foot wrong mm-hmm. or you would have messed it up for everybody yeah so it, wild an interesting thing i think about with these two guys actually in cruiserweight division stuff is like these aren't two guys um you look at like a ray mysterio and a tajiri back then matchup you know what i mean this is these are two guys uh, who are more character based totally yeah. and more <laughs> ground based as well and you know? the style of wrestling like when you say ray mysterio and tajiri 
You're thinking flip. Boom. I'm thinking, what's that move that fucking Will Ospreay and everybody does now that Tajiri did back then where they do the, the hand... Oh, the handspring, uh, yeah. We're going to get a lot yeah. of that yeah. and a lot of flips off the top rope mm-hmm. and a lot of diving to the outside of the yeah. ring and yeah. then a lot of kicks too, yeah. which you're not going to get here. I wasn't seeing a lot of kicks and martial arts type moves in this match. Yeah, no. So Great. it was more gritty, like a street fight kind mm-hmm. of thing, like Batman beating up the <laughs> villain in the alleyway. Mm. Unfortunately for the hurricane though. Yeah. Well, uh, that's what happens sometimes, especially sometimes, when the yeah. villain has, you know, the sidekick, the, the, the woman or the, whatever the case may be like here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, get into that. Yeah. So we had, you know, Jamie Noble getting the victory and he, he really pulled out all the, all the stops, which I like as a, as the villain doing that. Yeah. So Hurricane was on the top rope. Hurricane's on the top rope. We had Jamie Noble nudge, knock him. He hit his, hit his bread basket. <laughs> he hit the, the family jewels. The cojones. The, the, the hurra parts you know <laughs> oh i don't have a good sound effect sorry i was trying to get you something so he you know what i mean you know what i'm saying you know what i'm getting at so he was there uh jamie noble takes him down at that point we had we had him hit that nice nice fucking power bomb on him oh it was great um so it hits a quick little power bomb and then hurricane's foot actually got Gets onto on the, the bottom rope he's very close to the ropes there we had the ref come for the uh one two and who jumps in with the with the helping hand was Miss Nydia to Perfect. knock Hurricane's foot off that bottom rope, and we got a new cruiserweight champion. Incredible, yeah, incredible. Um, do do you think this match completely over delivered and and maybe exceeded your expectations that you had for? Um, over delivered. Would I say it over delivered? No, it was. It was just right, I, I guess. You know what I mean? It, it was like maybe, I don't want to say what I expected, but I know Jamie Jamie Noble and Hurricane, I, they match up very well together, I should say. I like the chemistry of these two guys. Yeah, bad guy, good guy, d- delivered for me. Totally. And I didn't really take into fact that like Jamie Noble, this was like, this was his first big win in the WWE. This really? Was like this was early on in his WWE run. Like this was, he was very new at this point. He hadn't had a lot of no prior pay per view matches. No, this was definitely like, no title runs. No, and this was like the beginning of all that character work with him and Nidian. This was a big point for him. This was a big matchup for him. Yeah. Well, they did a good job, and I think we probably spent way more time on it than we said we would. Um, what was the total time in the match? So they clocked in uh, eleven minutes and thirty eight seconds. So that's pretty good too. Yeah. It's longer than I was expecting. I definitely would have thought that would have been a single digit kind of eight minute nine minute match. You know what? It felt a little longer to me for some reason. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, again, I think that they, I was way more invested in a in a Shane Helms Hurricane, yeah. Jamie Noble cruiserweight title match than I would have expected to be. Yeah, if, fair you, if you told me about it going in. Mm. What do we got next? I'll show you right here, bud. Latino heat. You know how it is. Oh yeah. Could this rock, rocked out a little bit, buddy. This match. Shout out to Mike D. Before we get, I don't know if you're listening, Mike, if you're out there who's been on the round tables and some look backs in the past, but shout out to you for, I told you we were going to be looking at this, uh, this show and doing a look back of it. And you, what did you tell me? You said Eddie Guerrero, Ric Flair. And I was like, really? It's probably going to be awesome. Yeah. But I didn't really expect that when he, you know what I mean? Out of going into this Mm pay-per-view, you know, you're thinking Brock Lesnar, you're thinking, you know, Triple H and Undertaker, some of the bigger names. Not that Eddie Guerrero is not a big name, obviously, mm. but I didn't expect that. But then when it started and I started to like really take it in, dude, like, I don't know about Shawn Michaels, but this, <laughs> these might be the two best in ring competitors ever. Yeah. And I don't know, again, if I'm going out on a limb here and, you know, speaking crazy, but maybe two of your favorites as far as in ring work. Oh, in ring. Yeah. Mm. Like they're just, I, I don't know. It was amazing. I love this might have been my match of the night and I'm going to go out there and say it at the beginning here before we dive into the full match and talk about yeah. it, our thoughts but I yeah this this was this was one of my matches of the night yeah it was really good man um fuck Eddie Guerrero uh, Eddie Guerrero cut a little promo at the beginning and I thought that was great because I feel like he was really he was really showing a lot of his that that character the Th- this is when he started to break out a little more I feel like oh, okay you know and I mean? be a little funny too yeah not yeah. just so serious exactly yeah and it was with what Terry Reynolds, is that her name? 
Yeah, Terry, yeah. Terry backstage, so she she was kind of having the interview there. And then he went into something where he's like, oh, yeah, I want to thank my cousin, <laughs> Louis. Yeah, all these. All these names. He said, like, 15 different names. It was it was actually pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, and then he was saying, like, other people that weren't even family, and it was, it was I don't know, it was a super good promo. No, and then that led right into the match. Yeah. But I think Ric Flair came out first, no? Yeah, he did. Which? Different for you? I couldn't find it for you guys because it was going to open the show tonight, but Ric Flair had some... Questionable music. <laughs> it was a one. Maybe it was a one off. Maybe that's w- what I thought about. I it's thinking. not even that I thought it was bad. It's just like, don't <laughs> fix it if it ain't broken. Yeah, you know what I mean. And there's nothing wrong with the music that Ric Flair was using. This this was fine. Yeah, it's just again, don't you know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. You eat a good BLT, you're not gonna go look for a better one. Yeah, I hear you. You know, no. I don't know if that's a good example, but it's you know good. what I mean. I like, it's, you, yeah. if it's good, it's good. You don't need to fix it. Yeah. But to talk about, we talked about the stylistic uh, matchup of, of Jericho and Van Damme earlier. What about these two guys? These like, couldn't so, be more opposite. It couldn't be more opposite. But at the same time, they're very similar mm-hmm. in the sense that they can do a lot with nothing. And I can't remember if I've talked about this on roundtables and stuff before, mm-hmm. but the stuff that Eddie Guerrero can make out of one move. Yeah. He can turn a, a little back. What is this here? The chicken wing or the arm, arm stretcher? Uh, hammerlock. Or, hammerlock. Yeah. And I think I talked about this maybe with yeah. you on a show or, or Shane, but he can turn a hammer lock into 15 other moves yeah. and stretch you in this way and stretch you in that way and, you know, use his knee and maybe jump over the rope. And I, I don't know. I just, Eddie finds a way to make small little transitional moves mm-hmm. into like quote unquote spots. Yeah. And that's where I find, cause you're right. They're not similar style of wrestlers, but that's something I think that Ric Flair is also really good at doing. Yeah. is he turns chops and you know what I mean? Little like a, a move like the figure four leg lock mm-hmm. and turns it into one of the most iconic moves of all time. And along the lines of what you're saying, uh, doing a lot with a little, yeah. I feel like both of these guys are two guys that probably mesh well with anybody. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You know Just yeah. like an AJ Styles or somebody yeah. that you could literally stick in there with myself or a fucking broomstick yeah. and they would have a good match. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's crazy as that sounds. Mm-hmm. It's, they can make, you know, they could sell for a broomstick. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> but no, Ric Flair, I think that's, for me at least, that's what I find is similar about the two of them is the fact that Ric Flair and Eddie can both make a lot out of nothing. Yeah. They can turn very small little punches and transition moves into like stretch that out and the psychology. Yeah. I think as far as, I mean, you will get a Shawn Michaels and other people, but psychology, like there might not be two better guys to have in-ring psychology put a match together. Yeah, no, for sure. Another crazy thing looking at this and some of our other matchups tonight is like, I don't know if these guys tango up too many times throughout their careers. Yeah, that's kind of a theme throughout the, throughout the show or yeah. throughout this pay-per-view at least is there was a lot of matches that I think it was a one-time, one-off. Yeah, man. Um, Definitely an upper body business though, eh, brother? <laughs> yeah. Eddie's looking fucking huge in this one. Shout oh. out to Seth Rollins for that one. <laughs> upper body business, brother. And taking all the chops from Nate. Oh my! I God. like. I was thinking about this throughout it, man. Like this guy, to utilize the chops so well is like that's your main. That was his main offense. Fuck yeah! Was the chops. And then the little the little headlock punch, oh. man. And then how about Eddie? When I told you, you could hear him. They, they Eddie was in the corner, or Rick was in the corner, and then Rick swung him around and switched it. So then Eddie was in the corner. Yeah. And you hear Eddie, come on. <laughs> and he just like you know he's just telling Rick like oh. fucking give it to me bud here he, we go let's get her going he delivered <laughs> so wild um I, most of the stuff I have I have written down in my notes we talked about like lots of chops you know what I mean Eddie with the crazy utilization and, and of the body parts and and the getting a lot out of nothing the one uh, psychology fuck yeah no definitely the one move I wanted to shout out that Nate did was uh. He he told the ref to like he's like the, look right the turnbuckle or something and like he the ref looked over and he low blowed him like from the back. Oh though. yeah 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 he did like the I know exactly what yeah. you mean for anybody listening kind of like you you kicking him with the the your calf muscle yeah exactly in the nuts more yeah. or less um, with the distraction how do you got I know we get it at the end but mm. do you have the time on this one because I wrote down that it felt longish but I wasn't upset about that I wrote longish but awesome. Yeah, and you know what? Longest match of the night thus far. This one was 16 minutes and 50 seconds. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Because I said to you during it, I'm like, this is going a while. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, But then we got a lot of uh, 
shenanigans chicanery chicanery that's yeah, a good one too i like that <laughs> um we got benoit coming down to kind of more or less help eddie because it was that was a little bit of the storyline we didn't talk about before mm-hmm. benoit was involved a little bit prior what had happened on raw and stuff um but what did you think about all this and benoit what did he have the he had no tea and just the, yeah, no. <laughs> the black the black pants and no tea with the belt oh, it's a weird setup but yeah, yeah. Uh, you know it's that, 2002 yeah, it's a different time <laughs> Yeah, Benoit marched his way down, tried to get it Better than an XL <clears throat> button-up, I'll give you that. Yeah. Or a or, two XL button-up. Or a fucking WrestleMania jersey, so you know what I mean? I was, yeah. Or a Get the F Out t-shirt. Get the F Out, yeah. Yeah, there Which you go. I feel I like can... he might have wore two at some point. He definitely <laughs> wore one. <laughs> he definitely wore one. Continue, though. But he hit, he got, he got Rick, uh, the, the ref got knocked out or distracted by Eddie, and I remember Benoit got Nate in the cross face on the on, outside. On the outside of the ring, yeah. Like, what the, and he really locked it the fuck in. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a work. This is not a work. <laughs> Stay tuned for the t-shirt. Yeah. Coming soon to a pro wrestling look back store near you. <laughs> Definitely. Teespring.com. And uh, who else did we get involved in the matchup? Hard boy, baby face, bubba. <laughs> Baby face, Bubba. I like how I got you busting out a couple of tracks. Now. Oh, of course, buddy. So yeah, Baby Face Bubba came in there with the massive Bubba bomb yep. on Eddie for the win with the distracted referee. And I think, um, did Benoit get chased off? So for a second, the, or why? When, where when did the ref, the ref, um, the ref caught Benoit out around the ring and he shooed him out. He said, "Hey, get out of here!" And Benoit was like, "For what? For what?" Mm-hmm. The ref got him out of there. Or at least close enough to the entrance way. Yeah, yeah. At this point, and at that point, while well, that was going on, that's when we got baby face Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> that's a new track. Locking it in on Eddie and hitting that Bubba bomb, which and then, is quite the spot. Yeah, I I don't know if I would ever want to take a Bubba bomb. And, and yeah. there's way worse bumps to look at. Yep. You know, like yep. you look at a choke slam or, yep. a, or a rock bottom, and it's like. I might be more inclined to take a rock bottom than I would be a bubble bomb. Power bomb? Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Depends who's delivering it. Mm. Jamie Noble, maybe. Batista? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Fair enough. It's not to take anything away from Jamie Noble. Yeah. I would look like a little man beside Jamie <laughs> Noble. <laughs> Still. But yeah, man, the bubble bomb and then that. I, I was kind of shocked. I think we were both kind of shocked that that was the finish because we had the ref come in and... Yeah, Benoit was pissed and then... Flair comes over, slides in, one, two, three, and that was it. Yeah. Kind of underwhelming, but again, a psychology. Mm. And I mean, Ric Flair's not going to lose to Eddie, I don't think, clean. And I don't think Eddie, at that time, like you said, he was on the rise. I don't think you want him losing to Ric Flair clean or tapping out to Ric Flair clean either. So it's, I like the finish. I don't know where it went as far as Ron SmackDown and Bubba and, yeah. and, and Bish, or Bischoff, Benoit and everybody. Mm. I'm sure they had some kind of tag team match the next night or yeah. two weeks later or whatever, but um, I liked, like like you just said, I liked the finish. Yeah. It I was a good it, finish. It, it fit well. It made sense um, because, you know what, for, for an awesome match and two guys, like, how do you end it, right? This this really made sense for me. And especially they tied it all together, bringing Benoit into it and Bubba and what would happen after. No, totally. But uh, next on the docket. Next on the docket, we had a little bit of a commercial. Oh. We had to get the... F- Get the F out of the, the WWE commercial with the guy with the WWF head talking to all these chicks in the bar. Yeah. It was a really weird commercial. I was going to post something on our Instagram, but it was probably not even worth it, to be completely honest. So um, that was that. I mean, I like that I like that they played off that back then. Yeah. They didn't just drop the F and then like act like it was always WWE. You know they cool. kind of made it like... they They made an effort to make the fans want to get behind the idea of getting the F out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No. Because totally. if they didn't do that, then you know, and they you, they still had this happen. You're going to get a lot of people, oh, it's WWF to me. Yeah. It's like, they made there be something that you can get behind and cheer for, rah, rah, yeah, this is our company, get the F out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I like that. No, totally. It's crazy. I never thought about that until right now. I, I forgot about it actually a little bit. Really? Yeah, like it, I was like, oh. Like and I said this to you when we were watching it out. You like, didn't realize I didn't that was realize a whether this was F or E at the time ah. for a second. Like, because I I was just so into the show for sure. And I was like, oh, oh. I just I've just never like real. I like I said I kind of realize it now. I've never realized that they they it was probably thought about and planned and you know I don't know what the word would be, but they they planned this to, like I said for the fans to make it be something that the fans could get behind and be cheering for. You know what I mean? 
rather yeah. than just doing it and kind of like, oh yeah, WWF never happened. Let's just brush that under the table. And it's always been like, no, they yeah. kind of, they acknowledged it and were like, yeah, all right, we have to change. Get the fuck out. And they made it attitude. They gave some attitude yeah. to it. And you know what's crazy, man, to tie into all that? Like, I remember the night that it was like, I remember the night that that came, that was a thing. Like I was watching wrestling as a fan, no, no internet, no whatever. Yeah, I'm tuning into Monday Night Raw, and at the beginning, you know, we used to get the the logo, just flash yeah. across. So it would flash with the F, and then they like chopped it, and they did that, get the F out. Oh, see, and that's how. Yeah, and that's. I remember that first night it happened though. It but like that would be like a good strategy for someone, a young fan exactly. like yourself. Like, oh, okay, we're getting rid of the F. Whereas if it was just gone, mm -hmm. you'd be sitting there going. Where's the F? Why'd they get rid of it? This isn't what I remember. This mm -hmm. isn't what I grew up with. Like, yeah. at least they gave you a reason as to, no, it's okay, guys. Not much is changing. We're just getting the F out. And you're right. Like, looking back at it around that age that I was, I don't know, 13, 14, probably at the time, like, probably would have bugged you if they didn't say anything. Yeah. And it made it to me, I was like, oh, okay. And I wasn't, it didn't bother me that much. Yeah. But did you know about the whole wildlife fun thing? Afterwards, yeah. Like, Later? The next day, probably. I looked more oh, into okay, it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You got your encyclopedia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, after that, very quickly, I didn't even want to talk about it, but I did write a line down about it. Um, William Regal and... Oh, Christopher Nowinski, yes. Christopher Nowinski. The he, Harvard graduate. Yeah, give me a little bit of background. I feel like we I've seen him on a look back show and a look back show only. So, Nowinski, I, yeah, he was probably on one of our look backs. I don't know which one. We've done a few. We've done quite a bit. Um, Check so, him out. Yeah. <laughs> at PW Look Back, Instagram, Twitter, podcast, Podbean. Nowitzki, Spotify, I don't, I don't know if we've seen him in a match or a backstage thing, but he was on a look back. I believe he was actually, he comes from Tough Enough the same season as Maven. I think he might have been second place or he was in that top three, four kind okay. of range. They ended up taking him on. Uh, he had this gimmick where he was Harvard and he was the Harvard guy. And that's why he said that to the young lady. Uh, but, oh, about, about where do you go to school? And she said Harvard. Long Island or what did she say? Nassau County uh, uh, Community College, I think he, is what ha, she said. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. It's no Harvard. <laughs> Which, oh yeah, because they were in New York. I'm going, why, yeah. why did she say Nassau Community College when they're in fucking Columbus, Ohio? But that was at Times Square, so yeah. that makes perfect sense. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Kind of forgettable but, segment, but I guess we're talking about. Little interesting fact about him. I know he, after wrestling, like he deals with, uh, he's really involved in the concussion side of things though. Yeah. Oh, really? Like looking into that. Like looking into the post-concussion syndrome yeah. and that kind of stuff? Yeah. Huh. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know what match we're at now, now as far as number goes, but this is the first and only women's match of the night. Number five. Number five. If we want to get technical, there was a match on Sunday Night Heat. Yes. Which we didn't see, but it was the Hardy Boys. Well, yeah, it was the Hardy Boys. The Hardy Boys were on against, Sunday Night Heat. Against Raven and Steven Richards. So, How hardcore do you think that guy in the stands dressed up like Jeff Hardy was going during that match? probably pretty hard yeah well he was going nuts during he was probably doing his thing yeah well his don's day. swinging his arms all around the place right now all right molly holly versus trish stratus for the women's title yeah i like molly here yeah i like this version mm -hmm. this character yeah. as much as we'll talk about you know how different it was yeah i just I think it's because I'm slowly getting to watch more of her career and I never saw it. Oh, true, yeah. So I'm starting to like get behind her and mm. being able to be more, com not comfortable, but used to and familiar with seeing her. So it's yeah. not so like, oh, who's this chick? More appreciative of like her work. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that's that's a great way to yeah. put it. Um, puppy power. <laughs> yeah, famous Lawler, eh? Lawler quotes. I've never heard that one. I've heard him say, you know, the puppies and all yeah, this, yeah, but yeah. I've never heard him say she's got puppy power. Yeah. And literally talking about the power that she has coming from her tits. I, he's a str he's I respect the fuck out of the king, and like his documentary, his DVD is great, and he's a legend in Memphis and a legend in professional wrestling. But he's a bit of a trippy dude sometimes. He is that he is. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I like the purple gear, the whole cowboy hat, one strat, one hundred percent stratisfaction, and the purple onesie. Yeah. The the color that that purple it was wicked. It stood out. That gear was sick. Did she wear? Is that what she started wearing at the beginning of her career or had she had already had gimmicks where she was wearing kind of you know two piece with her big coat i can't remember what came so, first well no, she did wear the i feel like she did wear the shorts a little bit before as yeah well. okay like the short short and like the, the just tank like top a normal kind of tank thing. top yeah, and yeah. then she had the big coat no with the with the cowboy hat and yeah, in so her the, entrance yeah the coat and the cowboy hat goes back to her being the manager at test and albert that's what yeah. i thought okay yeah. yeah i don't know so that looked 
pretty good. I like the, the, the gear and the gimmick and the cowboy stuff. Um, well, Trish is, sorry. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say her music was a little off. And, oh, different for you. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, used for sure. to the, yeah. whoa. Yeah. This was, I, this was, reminds me of that Test Albert era, era of her and being the manager. I think like the one odd, one or two odd times she would have matches back then she had this music which could have even been their music as a tag team as well Trippy. so she didn't really have she was still growing thing yet yeah still growing into her own at this point is this um well we'll say it now she wins the women's championship here molly molly does oh yeah my yeah. bad she is the women's champion yep. here so what am i getting confused what i was gonna ask is is this title reign her first um, you know what? I would believe so, yeah. Like, when, she, when she's holding the belt at the beginning of the match, that's her first women's I, title reign, most likely? I could probably bet on Yeah. Okay. Because, yeah. yeah, you're right. Molly wins the title mm -hmm. um, in kind of a crazy way, but I want to talk about a little bit about Molly first. Yeah. And uh, the virgin wholesome ways that <laughs> she... <laughs> Shout out to Jim Ross. Fuck. <laughs> Quite the statement. And then I, her, her office job attire, looking like a soccer mom a little bit, looking like she maybe was going to... Yeah. Do some accounting for a firm. Yeah, interesting uh, gear. Very Molly, I would say. Everything Very, other yeah. than her boots legit looked like something you would just see any, you know, <laughs> average middle-aged woman wearing at the mall. Yep. It was very odd. Yeah, very non-wrestling, yeah. Very not. I'm sure there was a lot of double-sided tape involved in, oh, yeah. in the upper body of that, <laughs> you know, arrangement that yeah. she had going on. But she was wearing wrestling boots, I could tell that. Yep. Which, thank God she was. Um what I did like about the matchup was we talk about the opening of matchups and rivalries and heatedness of yeah. things. I know Trish, she wanted to get right to the action. These two had some heat going on. So she was like trying to get out of ref was kind of holding, holding her, back her back too. And she just came right for it with a couple of like punches type of thing. I like that. No, no lockup. Just let's get to it. But Molly got the best of her for the first, I want to say third, almost half of this match. Yeah. Molly was definitely doing most of the work, beating yeah. the shit out of Trish on the outside. Yeah. Uh, and then we got a Molly go round. Yep. And she connected with it. I can't, I can't off the top of my head, honestly, remember it. I think she did because yep. that led to the, the, the kind of little spin pin roll up type pin that led to the tights getting pulled and the one, two, three and Molly. Is that, was that Molly's first championship win? Do you know? Uh, probably, Mo probably not. I'm trying to think of other versions of Molly. No, it wasn't. No, no, no. I didn't think so, but I thought maybe you never know. Yeah, I was thinking, yeah, no. Yeah, so, I don't know, like I said, she was beating up Trish quite a bit. Molly wins the title, new champion. I love that title belt. Yeah. I love the look of that belt. Yeah, man, me It's too. very basic, but I, I've always loved the look of it. Same. It's it's There isn't too much going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like the fact that, you know, the red on the... Inside of it, totally. The, the word woman's. It's just a very little thing, but it makes it for me. Like, if that when I think of that title, I think of that. Like that stands out, it pops. It's... Um, it screams Trish Stratus, though. Yeah. And Lita yeah. a little bit, too. But, oh, yeah. But yeah. more, like, when I see that belt, I will, and for always, you know, I'm always going to think Trish. Mm -hmm. Especially, I'm happy that I didn't have to witness the Divas and Women's title era. Yeah. Because I, I vaguely, I don't even remember, do you know when they brought in that Divas title? Uh, 2008 or nine, probably. So right after I stopped yeah. watching wrestling. And then there was kind of a time where they were both there and then they got mixed no. together. And I, I'm just happy I didn't see all that. Like the, basically the final Same. stuff yeah. I saw with this title that we're talking about tonight was was Trish winning it at Unforgiven and then vacating it the next night yeah. on, on uh, Raw mm. and having a tournament. But yeah, I don't know. Good match and I guess good for Molly. Yeah, a nice little one. It wasn't uh, too long. It was five minutes and 41 seconds. Okay, yeah. So probably the shortest one of the night so far. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Alrighty, um, I don't have any music for you, but I got this, the ring bell, just like we've been doing it. I like it. It's I want to keep this going on the on the look back show and how to separate the matches with the yeah keeps it nice and official. It does. It does. And, and I, they I, ring the bell, you know. Hey, we were ringing the bell too. Totally. I wish I had some music ready for this one. I really do, but I don't. So Kurt Angle versus Hulk Hogan, the battle for Captain America. Yeah. Who is Captain America? Oh man. Right. <laughs> The real, yeah, who is the real American yeah, who, hero? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Who is the real American hero? Oof, I, uh, I don't know, man. We got to, that might be a separate uh, show in itself if we're going to do the, the Angle Hogan battle. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to pull up the Captain America Marvel theme song here, but I <laughs> oh, I don't know how quickly I can do that for you. Yeah. 
Uh, just give me your some of your thoughts because I've got a decent amount to say about this one. I just want some of your kind of over um, overall over overview of this. So right off the hop, I want to say this. I think this, if I'm not mistaken, probably these guys just like Eddie Guerrero, or Ric Flair didn't tangle up too much in their careers. I feel like this was probably a one and only, if not on a random SmackDown type of situation. As far as a big match goes, this was probably the one. Um, I really enjoyed this match. I remember this match pretty well. Uh, looking back to it, like, you know, it's two guys who, like, I wouldn't picture having a decent match together. Like, they're kind of, it's kind of a weird style oh, matchup. Totally, other than the characters. Yeah. The characters match the up characters, great together. Yeah. But, but this in ring styles, I totally agree with you. It's, it's kind of way out in left field. Yeah, so, so different. But, you know, again, I feel Kurt Angle, too, is one of those guys who could probably just have a good one with anybody. Not to take away from Hogan, but these two matched up really well together. Shout out to Kurt Angle's wig as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I watched this with Mike D. Yeah, a little while ago, probably a couple weeks before we're recording this episode today. So I didn't realize that this was on the same pay per view. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wish, like, I mean, don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed watching it with Mike D. But I kind of wish I hadn't because of the reaction that I had that day with Mike D. So it's kind of a toss up. I don't know. I really enjoyed that yeah. watching it with Mike too, because I was fully bought into thinking that Hogan was going to win this match. Yep. And I mean, we'll get to the finish and how it all went down, but that was not the case. So I just, I'll shout out Hogan's selling yeah. in this match was amazing. His, well, lungs really <laughs> like his wind. He yeah, didn't yeah. seem like he was, you know, Kurt Angle, somebody that could probably blow somebody up pretty easy in the mm -hmm. sense that get them too tired to keep going. But let's, let's bring it home, brother. Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? And then, um, Little things I want you to talk about too is the Jimi Hendrix music. Oh yeah, man, dope, dope, dope. Uh, fuck, Hogan. This was during the Hogan, I guess, comeback run. You know, after NWO stuff with Rock, and the Jimi Hendrix music, man. It's something that if you hey, if you're looking up on the network, guys, go. You, yeah, you're probably not gonna get it. You know what I mean? It might be dubbed in it. It might be real American. It might be something else. I'm not sure. Let us know in the comments yeah. if you guys are doing the whole look back proper and you're watching this. Uh, this king of the ring show first and then listening to us let us know what music was played because we watched the dvd that was produced in 2002 and yeah. or four around that time mm -hmm. so uh, yeah i'd be curious to know too dom awesome music though and i can't even say that i like one better than the other like real american classic hogan i love it incredible but man i watched this version of hulk hogan like live and this is like more of what I knew. As much as I watched the old VHSs and rented them and seen a lot of Real American, yeah, this seeing it live it has a special place for me too. Totally. Uh, you talked about his gear and yeah. how much you loved this version of his gear, mm -hmm. and kind of I was saying, well, that yeah, that's kind of the one that I associate Hulk Hogan wearing the yeah. most is that tie dye orange and, and red or yellow and red, I guess, gear and not so much the trunks that I didn't really see, mm -hmm. you know, growing up, especially not the NWO stuff. I didn't watch any of that live either. So. Yeah. Um, pretty good. Pretty good. Definitely. That's, I think that might be the first time I've said pretty good on oh, a look back show. Wow. I'm glad it came back though. Oh, definitely. Um, they were fighting a lot on the outside of the ring. I gotta, I gotta be honest. Like <laughs> it was a bit of a walk and brawl too, as much as I said, you know, Hogan wasn't getting too winded. They, 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 it was a good contrast. I think of both. Yeah. There wasn't a little bit too much outside the ring like we got maybe in the main event, and there wasn't too much, you know, in the ring like, you know, maybe uh, uh, Flair and, and Guerrero, yeah. like, for example. I don't think they left the ring very much, which no. isn't a Flair thing to do. Yeah. Um, at least in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, it was it was really good. And, like, I talked about it before. The the, the selling was amazing. Yeah. Um, how about the, the, the what's, I, I don't know his name. I want to say Mike Yoda. The referee, I, man. I believe so. He I was he looking was so young. It was crazy. <laughs> That's all. I, I was like, holy shit. He, he's dead. aged the most out of these referees that are still around, at least. <laughs> um, but I was bought into this one, man. Like, like like I said, I watched it with Mike D a week ago, and we, towards the end of the match, when you, you get the, the, the kind of the headlock and then the Hogan swinging his finger yep. around and coming back out and doing the whole Hogan thing, and then leading to the leg drop, and then, <laughs> oh my God, bro. Kurt, the... Hogan goes in for the leg drop and then Kurt Angle midair. Like it wasn't even like before he jumped. It was like while Hogan was on his way down 
for the leg drop. Kurt Angle moves out of the way and grabs Hogan's ankle before he even manages to hit the mat. I don't know how Kurt Angle moves so quickly. Yeah. No. And then holds that ankle lock in for, you know, a significant amount of time until... And well, what I liked about this, too, I wanted to speak on, uh, again, on the Hogan selling of this uh, this move. So Angle, Angle, I said Angle, when Angle locks in the ankle lock there, you see Hogan and he's so, like, he's he's almost defeated and he puts his head down and he's, like, he's there and he looks like he's, he's before he looks like he's about to tap, Hogan? he's, like, he's just down and he's, like, he's really leaning, just face down. And then he starts to kind of, the crowd is with him, and then he starts to, he's putting his hand up and he really like, and then he's kind of fighting, fighting, tries to do the, the kick. You know what I mean? Rolls around. Rolls yeah. Over. Tries to roll to his back and then kick Kurt off of him. And right. Kurt doesn't let go. Nope. <laughs> Classic Kurt angle just keeps it locked in. And before we get to the finish, the craziest part about all this was like, I mean, maybe not if you knew what was going on. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But if you're watching this with no idea as far as what's going to happen, I thought Hogan was hitting that leg drop and it was done. Mm -hmm. Like the way the match had flowed yeah. to that point. Because the chair shot. Exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. We didn't talk about the Kurt coming in with the chair and hitting the ropes. Mm -hmm. The chair bouncing off the ropes and hitting Kurt in the face. And then big boot, leg drop. Like, I thought that was it. I really, really, really did. So for Kurt to, like I said, move as quick as a cat and get that ankle lock locked in and then not release it. Mm -hmm. And then, like, people can chirp Hogan all they want as far as, you know, outside what he's, whatever. Mm -hmm. But this guy in the ring still is always, and in my opinion, will be one of the best guys at telling a story. Mm -hmm. And that little thing, what did I say? He grabbed the rope, yeah. and then Kurt kind of, like, he had it for longer than you'd typically see. It wasn't just his hand. He kind of got his arm around it, and Kurt fell down. And then Kurt's like, no, 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 he gets back up, and he yeah. drags him back to the middle. And you can kind of see in Hogan's face, like, he looks at the ref like, oh, I got the rope. Like, I, yeah. Yeah. why didn't he let go? Like, I, I touched the rope. And then he's like, oh, fuck, man, I have to. And he taps out, and yeah. it was like, it felt real. Yeah. It felt like when somebody would be like, what do you mean? Like, the guy should have let go. He's like, oh, I can't hold any longer. And he, whatever, I'll tap out. He's the real American hero. And, dude, um, it's it's crazy that you were talking about buying in and the whole matchup and everything. Honestly, if you, if you didn't mention it to me, like, a couple weeks ago, because we talked off record about it. Yeah. Like, I... I probably would have forgot because I remember when I I have a best of King of the Ring DVD and I remember when I watched this match back before I like feel, I forgot I feel who horrible won. then no 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 <laughs> I feel horrible I shouldn't have I shouldn't have ruined I you, you hear that guys I ruined it hey we didn't know what we were we were looking back at you know I was I mean? only thinking about one person that's my album it's by myself solo that's it just me so next time I'll be more considerate Don all that being said though Kurt. The real American, I guess, right? Uh, threw his wig back on and his nice little headgear. Yeah, and honestly, there was just one other little thing I wanted to talk about the match itself. For sure, yeah. Two, well, two little things was yeah. b b not related to the finish. Was one the amount of bumps that Hogan was taking? Yeah. And this being, you know, two thousand two, it's not like this is you know nineteen eighty five or even nineteen ninety five. Yeah, yeah. It's two thousand two. Mm -hmm. So for him to be taking those bumps at that point still is significant, and then. Angle's ability to just take care of people. Mm. Maybe that's not you want to want, what you want to talk about in a simulated fight, but it's like this is we all know why we're here, and it's professional, and it's a show. Mm. And Angle's ability, like I said in that backdrop, that one backdrop where he lifted him up, and it was just I don't know. It blows my mind that Kurt Angle was able to become such a good professional wrestler with such little prior experience. I mean, and almost harder because he like I remember I've heard interviews of Kurt Angle talking where he said that it was he had to unlearn things yeah you know what I mean you spend so much time like with not wanting your shoulders to touch the mat in real wrestling or in you know shoot amateur yeah. wrestling and in professional wrestling that's literally how you save yourself yeah from getting hurt is making sure you're flat backing and your entire both shoulders are landing on the mat and that kind of stuff so it's it was a lot, I would imagine, to switch over. So I just wanted to give Kurt Angle a little more credit there. No, definitely. And then, honestly, Hogan's the fucking man. Like I said, he just... The the storytelling for me in that little moment of the, the rope grabbing, it, it, it made a huge difference as far as the story that they were telling. Yeah, man. In my opinion. Um, it, to, to touch on Hogan quick for a sec, uh, one last thing too. Like, I don't know how much of that this like period of Hogan you've seen like is but it's it's it was good man like he did some good things at this time really yeah like I thought it was a good good run I can see why shout out to our buddy Herdy who's yet to come on the show he will be at some point mm -hmm. but um I can see why he was such a fan of Hogan yeah yeah 
because I always wondered that as, as a kid. I was thinking, how can he be such a fan of this guy from so long ago? Mm -hmm. Well, Hurdy was a big watcher of that yeah, era. This era, yeah. So I can get now why you can be such a a fan of Hulk Hogan when you're somebody who watched wrestling in the early 2000s, not you know the late to early 90s. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, the total time of that matchup was 12 minutes and 8 seconds. So kind of middle of the road for yeah. for this show at least? Decent time. I think that seems about right for even what I probably thought. Totally. Yeah. I've said that too many times tonight. I'm going to try and not say it totally. Dude. Dude. Um. Is this the main event, Nick? It fucking should be. I can't wait. This is. I'm so excited. We're at this part of the show. It it's gonna be fun. Fucking should be. I, well, do you want to talk? We've already hit the ring bell, so we'll just quickly, briefly, briefly, briefly discuss the Rock with the Gold Dust and the Booker T. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, backstage. backstage. You, you. I want to get your thoughts on this one oh, before man. we get to what should have been the fucking main event. Well, I don't know. This segment was awesome, man. Just funny. Just great. Like I was okay with. It, it seemed a little long, but like totally. I was like, fuck, I don't even give a fuck because it's The Rock. It's, you know, it's The Rock, this Rock, Rock and Rock and Booker, man. I don't know if uh, listeners have seen a lot of their work together. Yeah, you but, told me they had feuded for the WCW title when that title was brought over. And to it was WWE. great, man. Like they were hilarious. They're, they're, the back and forths between the two of them, The Rock, obviously, we know what he can do on the mic. Booker T's awesome as well. Yeah. Um, Booker T, I remember he would like do the rock bottom and call it his own the bookend. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that where that came? <laughs> That's where it came from. Yeah. No fucking. Yeah. I always wondered that as a kid. I'm like, yeah. hmm. It's weird that he does the same move except for he lands on his knees and yeah. not his stomach. Yeah. But now that makes perfect sense as far as them having a feud and him <laughs> kind of stealing it more or less from the rock. Yeah, man. And uh, Gold Dust, you know, he was great in this too. Dressed up like the Rock had the T. Had the hair fucking painted and <laughs> yeah 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 he he looking like the Rock. I asked him I'm like why does he got Drake hair? Why does he look like Drake? So he's going doing his best Rock impression and then the Rock comes from behind and just takes over from this point on. And uh, he gave them he gave them a lot of love too, which was cool. Yeah, my favorite I think line of the whole little promo. And you're right, it was a little longer than maybe it needed to be. Was mm -hmm. when he turned to Goldust and he asked him. He's like, did you pay for that? And he was he was referring to the the rock T shirt that he was wearing. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. And he's like, good. <laughs> and he just <laughs> continued on. So it's just like, good. I'm getting my merch money. So I'm happy you bought that shirt. You're making me money. Um, awesome, awesome. It's like, man, just seeing this though. Like, I don't know. Sometimes I guess you forget until you go back and watch these things. Just the rock, how fucking wicked he is, how awesome he was with, with the promos, man. Like everything about it. When he's imitating Gold Dust and <laughs> like, he's like, don't. <laughs> do that don't please don't do that yeah. yeah it was really good and then at the end with the rock leaves and book is there with his hand can you dig that yeah. sucker were they a tag team yeah for a little... and this was during that time this yeah. was at that time yeah. okay and this was post rock and booker feuding yeah okay yeah because i guess rock we'll get to it later and that's why uh in the beginning they addressed that actually which i like that they addressed that too because he was saying uh about he, the rock brought up about playing for one team and this was shortly after, you know what I mean, WWE wins over WCW slash ECW. Hmm. And Booker T is one of the guys who stuck around. The Rock brought that up too. I guess that's we're true. We're all playing yeah, for the yeah, same yeah. team. We're all on the same team yeah. now. That makes sense. Should we get to it, Don? Yeah, yeah. King of the Ring finals. There we go. That's uh, the only going to The main it. event. It's like I said, <laughs> we're, we'll go back. It fucking should have been the main event, man. Yeah. In my <laughs> opinion, this is dumb. This is dumb. We're all here for the King of the Ring. <laughs> This pay-per-view is called King of the Ring. Yeah. And there's no main event of this. This is not treated like it's a big deal. It's just treated like, oh, we got Brock Lesnar and RBD in a match. And it's going to be a good one, folks. Uh, I don't know. We'll talk more about it. I want to talk about the match itself yeah. and the entrances and the people that were in this match. RVD, we didn't talk about it because I don't think he did it in the, in the first match. If he did, I missed it. But I, I miss and I love that pyro. The little square. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. I don't know. What was it? I didn't like, even book that the like, square aspect of it. What? No. Like, even back in the day? No. I don't think so. You're going to have to go back and watch that. Yeah. Because it's, when it goes off, it goes off in a square. So then, like, when it when it's, when it's the lights are gone, like the fire from the pyro, yeah. you see a smoky square. And it's like he's walking under this big square. Hmm. I got to show you that. Because yeah, that's yeah. Like, I remember that from when I was 12. Yeah, no. So when I seen it, and it was in the video games... So when I seen, I was like, "Oh yeah, I forgot he had." Then I wrote it, and I'm like, "RVD, that that square pro, uh, square pyro." Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so I love that a little kind of retro RVD type thing. And it was different. Nobody yeah. ever had pyro like that. It mm. kind of like blew up and stayed in one spot. Mm. And it wasn't like there was a, no, I, get, I know what you're talking about. Cause I know I shouldn't say square. Pyro, I should like, say square with, with a missing bottom. Like it goes like this up. Right. It's like, it's like a half. I don't fucking know. Like here, I'll show you on this piece of paper. Like an upside down triangle like that. So literally yeah, like a square yeah. without the bottom. Yeah. And the edges are a little facing yeah, yeah, yeah. inwards. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Spending probably too no, much sorry. time was... on the pyro. No, no, no. It's okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's cool. I've always loved that. And it was kind of a, a, a flashback to original RVD and the video game, like I said. Mm -hmm. This was another one that I think this is maybe a theme on the show too. Conflicting styles. Yeah. Like two wrestlers that you wouldn't expect to ever see wrestle each other. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, what did I say to you during the match? These two probably enjoy wrestling each other. Yeah. Yeah. And I definitely think that not only because, like I said to you during the match as well, Brock Lesnar knows he can probably throw around RVD and make create movement within the match easier than he can with a test or a Albert or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, and then RVD is, is the type of guy we think mm -hmm. that is hard hitting and yeah. he, he's going to go out there and tell Brock, Hey, you don't, you need, don't, don't worry about being too hard or, you know, having to go easy, just give it to me hard and we'll fucking go out there and have a good match and we'll worry about the fucking concussions and shit later. <laughs> Cause no, seriously. And RVD's talked about that shit in interviews, you know, in, in modern day in yeah. the sense that he used to just look at that as like, Oh, it was a little sh shake it off yeah, in the no. ring and, and keep going. And that's just a part of wrestling. And yeah. you know, he was that kind of guy mm -hmm. good or bad that, you know, talk about that on another day. Yeah, but, no. um, only one major title in the company at this point, right? Yes. So this was, this is another reason, bro, why I don't like this match. And it's not that I don't like the match itself and what they did. Mm -hmm. I don't like the placement of the match and the reasoning for this match and everything around it. It took away from the King of the Ring aspect to me. Really? Because I think what they were trying to do is they wanted to create a number one contender championship tournament and find out who the number one contender is going to be to fight at SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. But rather than just doing that, let's just make a King of the Ring tournament and then whoever wins the King of the Ring is the number one contender. Like, I feel like they just kind of use that name mm. to make this tournament feel more important. Mm. Because their only intention with Brock winning this King of the Ring was we want Brock to be the number one contender for the WWE Championship. How do we make Brock number one contender? Yeah. Well, mm, what if he wins a tournament? Well, yeah, what if, what if he wins a King of the Ring tournament? Mm. And then he's just number one and he's the king. But well, we don't want him to dress up like a king. Well, he doesn't have to. Yeah. It'll just be like a number one contendership tournament slash king of the... That's an interesting theory. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, again, this is just stuff I'm thinking of as I'm watching and as I'm writing and taking yeah. notes. No, that's an interesting theory. I never thought of it like that. Like, I, w I, I personally wasn't upset at it not being the main event. I was just so shocked. For me, I've watched a lot of King of the Rings, too. Okay. So, like, I'm used to that. Not like, being... It's not, I don't... I don't know if it's ever been the main event, if unless we're going back to maybe like a Harley race. It just doesn't make sense to me, like to, not to talk too much current, but currently right yeah. now in 2019, we have a tournament, a King of the Ring tournament, mm -hmm. and it's going to culminate at a Clash of Champions pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. And to me, that makes sense to not have this King of the Ring tournament be the main event because it's not a King of the Ring pay-per-view. It's, yeah. it's the King of the Ring tournament finishing at the Clash of Champions Yeah, rather than the tournament finishing at the King of the Ring. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they just liked that name back then. And Well, I think they've had to alter the King of the Ring so much throughout the years, and this is due to the high volume of winners, too. Yeah. Like, because I'm, like we I talked remember, about at the beginning of the show. Yeah, man. Like, I remember going back to, like, you know, Bam Bam and Brett in the finals at one time. Like, multiple, more than just the, I don't know, what is the semi, the the, the earlier part of the night, the um, the semifinals yeah. matchups. Like, Though it being like almost a whole tournament kind of taking place in, in one, one night. night. Well, I've heard people saying that on Twitter and stuff <laughs> yeah. now recently saying that they kind of would like that format to happen where they wrestle, you know, three or four matches in one night. And then maybe a main event being like just the WWF title. You know what I mean? On like that have, same pay-per-view. Yeah, pay yeah. Like have every, everything be, everything's about the King of the Ring. There's no tag, no women's, no whatever. Everything's King of the Ring and then we even get the finals and then maybe a... WWF time. that would make more sense I can understand because that's just like hey we're all here to see the champion as well mm -hmm. and it's like the rest of the night is dedicated to the tournament again yeah. I don't want to act like I hated this show because mm -hmm. this wasn't the main event yeah, no. not what I mean it's just it took away from the importance of the tournament and then let's let's move our way kind of 
into to the the finish of it and what i mentioned earlier with Heyman kind of getting the what's that move called the the uh, i don't know if you'd call it a no it's not like a neck breaker but it's a it's a the wrestler's inside the ring Heyman's on the outside of the ring he jumps up and grabs their neck and bounces it off the top rope yeah so he does that to rvd and then RVD flips back and lands on Brock Lesnar leg like, for a pin, <laughs> that which was, was great. an amazing yeah. spot. Whoever thought about that and the, the differentness of doing that mm. was a super good idea. Differentness. I don't know if that's a fucking word. But anyway, um, it was a good idea, and I liked that. And then kind of get to the, the – do you want to do your Don spots here in the finish? Well, I had a quick question for you too. For sure. Like with the with the match being not as long too, would like – would you would you ever like would you is there a scenario where you'd want this as the main event and the uh title match before this? Maybe? I I yeah, at this show I would still take that you could give me the exact same matches that we got and I'd still want them reversed. Really? Yeah. That's like you could literally give me everything that happened in the main event just not in the main event. True. But that again, bro, that just goes back to this being a king of the ring and it as somebody like if i'm not a wrestling fan and i sit down to watch this it's like oh this is the king of the ring tournament okay yeah. sweet like let's we'll see the finals like see, you know what i my, mean but here's my gripe with a lot of today's st- a product too today of a is that they don't modern, treat the wwe championship well enough yeah like it is the king of the ring but this is the wwe that's you know? a good statement like i i just always like that as the no, oh, that's a good. That's a very good point. I think for me, it's more the unless we're getting some kind of fucking iconic shit that'll never happen it's, again. There's two things, honestly, mm. that it, that were the biggest. It's it's the not acting like this is a big deal, not putting it in the main event, mm. and then let's just get to it. Brock Lesnar hits an F five. Yeah. On on uh, RVD, I can't remember the sequence. That's why I wanted you to kind of get into that. But so he he hits the F five on him. Yeah. Basically, that's it. He hits the F five and he wins, and it was kind of abrupt. What was the time? Yeah, this is uh, only five minutes and forty four seconds. Wasn't okay, that was long. really short. Maybe yeah. I wouldn't have wanted that in the last match. But that, see that well, that that is really short. It wouldn't have been that short if it was the last match <laughs> either. We know that. My biggest thing is the number one contendership, man. Why? Because it takes away. It makes it like we're fighting for that, and we're not fighting to be the king of the ring. Mm. We're fighting to be the number one contender for the WWE Championship. Yeah, and I don't like that. That and then the other aspect at the end of the match when it's all said and done and it's all over, what do we get? We act like it's any other match on Monday Night Raw. Brock Lesnar's sitting on the edge of the ring, Mm -hmm. smiling with Paul Heyman, holding his head, whatever, walking towards the back. Mm -hmm. It literally looked like the end of any match I've ever seen in my life. No, and I get what we talked about. We don't want Brock with the king gimmick. Yeah. But we didn't get anything. We didn't, that this is what made me feel like, oh, this isn't a king of the ring. Mm. This is a number one contendership tournament. Yeah. And Brock just became the number one contender. Yeah. He didn't just become the king of the ring. It as They, they can call it that. Yeah. And, but in my opinion, it, it didn't have that because there was no celebration. It was like this tournament just happened for how many weeks and Brock just won it. Yeah. And you guys are just cutting to Michael Cole and Taz talking about Triple H and Undertaker now? I believe the coronation shit might have take, taken place on Raw. If anything, like him, yeah, being him having a moment of uh, being you know, the king for a yeah, second and yeah. sitting, but in not, a, not, no, 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 put on the but crown even, and, even just sitting in a fucking throne yeah. for a second just to acknowledge or a trophy like Edge. Mm. I don't care. I just people have invested their time mm. in watching this tournament take place over X amount of weeks, yeah, and then bought a pay per view with the name of the tournament, mm. and then what? And then we don't even celebrate the winner. He just wins and that's it. And we move on. We got Taz and Michael Cole talking about Undertaker and Triple H. Yeah. It's not like I'm fucking... But to, to, to just to play off of that, debate the point a bit, is that at, at this point in time too, the reason why I was more okay with him getting that number one contendership is because when when they play these guys at the beginning and they talk about these guys, some of them weren't in that position before and then they won and then they got... They were right into that position shortly after. So it's like we know that this guy is going to be that. Mm-hmm. So let's just get, let's just get to it. So I, I kind of like that side of it rather than, you know, okay, he's going to win. We'll let him do his thing for a couple months, whatever. And but then, don't you think he can do that without saying that? Like, don't you think he can just win the King of the Ring and then two months later, it's like, he's the King of the Ring. He should deserve a title shot. Like, I get what you're saying. You're not wrong. It's just like, you don't even need to say, like, don't, yeah. don't even tell us that it's a number one contender. Like, there was no relevance to that. 
other than like Heyman in the main event. Yeah. Or on not in the main event in this match talking about oh if he has to fight the Rock it doesn't matter if he does like you know talking about the people that he could mm-hmm. be fighting yeah when he becomes number one contender but I don't know man yeah I'm I'm different about it I guess I I like it for that aspect because like I I feel like there's been so many guys where it's like okay they win and it's like oh I know he's gonna be fighting for that title in a month or in two month. anyway so at least here to have it, was it like be definitive. known. Okay, I'm okay with that because I, we're so used to it at this point. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad it's not like that every time. Totally. This is the one, and it's Brock Lesnar. It's just, it's different. It's it's unique. He's the only one to ever have I, that. I got to be honest. If there was some sort of inauguration of Brock Lesnar being the king mm-hmm. in a way on Raw, it, I would it feel take, better. It, a little it better. does make it, that would definitely make it a little bit better. It's it was just the abruptness. Mm. It it felt like a Monday Night Raw match where like he's you know what I mean where he's kind of mm. he won the match he celebrated for a second and then it's on to the next thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the one thing that really, you know, when you, when you put in a King of the Ring DVD, you expect to see a crowning king mm-hmm. or something of that nature. Whereas that was not. <clears throat> I don't think that's what they wanted with this. And not to not to fucking harp on this forever, but it is the King of the Ring, so let, we can talk about it. Yeah. Um, of course I think that man even in those later years they moved away from that aspect of it the king yeah the king aspect of it and just treated like, it more it like a just tournament. like a tournament and it was a title that like a not a physical title but a title a title that I know you, you could mean. have because even when I think of a Ken Shamrock or a Billy Gunn <laughs> like there was they didn't include those guys though yeah but you know what I mean like Sto- um, Stone Cold Edge like yeah. he's got like I don't know. Sorry, I shouldn't go back as far as Stone Cold, but Edge. Edge is a great example. Yeah, and that was the year before, wasn't yeah. it? Or was it uh, two years before? Edge was the year before, yeah. Okay. So, like, when I think of Edge, like, sa- same kind of deal, hmm. you know? Yeah, no, no, no. And and I like this conversation. I yeah, like yeah. the no, dynamic of yeah. the two of us having different opinions yeah. about it, too. I just, it was something that I had to bring up. and mm. No, for sure. Yeah, I don't know. If if uh, if there's if, if, if there's anything else... To say about this match, I mean, get it off your chest now because we can move on. Um, other than I feel that, like no, we've talked a lot about it. It was, yeah, it was pretty quick. We didn't get too deep into how the finish <laughs> happened, but like I said, it was a five-minute match and it ended with an F5, so I don't think the, the final sequence changes that much. I don't... Do you remember what happened other I than... I believe the, it was right after... Like, so when Heyman did the, the pull down, the land, the kick out... Kick out. He gets up and F5s him yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Heyman might have distracted him again really quick. I can't remember. Yeah, but it was right after that. I know. Well, the actual main event we Next, have here. Yeah, this is your match of the night? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Triple H versus Undertaker. Yeah. WWE Undisputed Championship. This is probably my favorite title belt in the history of wrestling. Mm. As far as looking aesthetically pleasing. and Yeah. I don't know. I had the plastic one when I was a kid, so that might be kind of part of the reason as to okay. why I like yeah. it so much. But I also bought it as a kid so I obviously liked it then too right for sure um but yeah Triple H and Undertaker trippy ass main event for the king of the ring in my opinion <laughs> but, but we've talked enough that about we it. Do the title it is yeah it's just I mean I don't know I don't know we can yeah, I feel like me and you could go on this along the winner the winner is gonna fight the champ let's see who he's gonna fight now then let's have him out there and not the rock oh well we had him we all know he can't really not to say that he can't really, but he was so new. He was so new at this I time. just mean even if he's sitting in a chair watching. Beside him and yeah. Just watch he it. Yeah, he he's could've like, been. I get to fight whoever wins this. Yeah. You know, or I'm going to. Maybe they didn't want to do that because they knew it wouldn't have been either one of them. But well, and then down maybe the line, didn't want to mix him and Rock. And he there was a mystique. There was still such a mystique to Brock at this point too. Like I well, said, he was so new. And I want to find out what happened post pay-per-view because I know you said to me when we were watching. Oh, it, I could tell you. I you're going to yeah, tell me yeah, on the show. So. Yeah. Um. I don't mean go, don't get into that yet, but yeah, I mean yeah. <laughs> give me some of your thoughts, kind of on Big Evil and and the, the music from Undertaker yes. and just all of that. Uh, so this version of Undertaker, I I feel like I might have said this a bit before, but on a different show, big big evil, big red with the devil red tee that he used to wear. Love that shit. Love the you music. You done it now. Love that you theme. You gonna make a big <laughs> mistake. I love him being the heel, walking around talking about respect, talking about how he. A lot of a lot of bases of this character was Undertaker saying that, you know, he's been around so long and he doesn't get the respect he deserves, and mm-hmm. he really like always threw that out there. So I thought that was a nice touch, especially making such a change in a character. 
and being that he is the Undertaker, man, he has at this point been around for so long. Yeah, it saddens me a little bit that I never got to see non dead man Undertaker mm. live. Yeah. Every version I've ever seen of him as far as live watching of wrestling was, was the dead man. True. Yeah. So I don't know. Small point, but No, it's an interesting one too, right? Different, yeah. Um all that being said, him and Triple H we talked about well, we talked about while we were watching the show about, you know, two guys we like some people we like maybe matching up together. We yeah, you can go check out the round table yeah. episode fifty one for some of that stuff. We talked about some of our favorite people who were, you know, two guys that you feel like you can always watch wrestle each other. Mm-hmm. Not to say that like these are two guys that I would necessarily jump to right away, but honestly when I think back to a lot of their matches that I've watched in the past, I like these two together. And like, they have- I like the chemistry. And they have wrestled a lot. Yeah, they have. In big uh, big stages, too. And many different eras, too. Oh, totally. Yeah. Even current. Yeah. Like uh, with the, the tag team match that they had with, yeah. the, you know, the DX versus the Brothers of Destruction and all that kind of stuff. And but their WrestleMania matches. And exactly, yeah. 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 Um, what, uh, about, what about Triple H? I know uh, we were talking yeah, we gotta about... Yeah, we got to give him some love, too. Oh, fuck. Gotta give him Bro, he was over like, <laughs> over like Rover, over as it. Taz says. Yeah. Because... I don't even know, man. That young lady. Fucking oh, my God. I wrote it down. I said, I think that's the first time I've ever wrote awesome blonde MILF in the crowd <laughs> yeah. in my notes because she was going nuts for oh. Triple H. And then to the point where, like, they weren't even on the edge of the ring anymore. They were back in the middle of the ring. And me and you knew the voice of the girl who was freaking out because she was louder than anybody else. Oh. And I'm sure there was a mic near her, but still. <laughs> um. This was a slugfest, is what kind of what I wrote at the beginning, and just yeah. just pure, just similar to like the Brock Lesnar and Test, but less big power moves, mm-hmm. more a lot of punches, a lot of kicks, a lot of beating each other up, and, and and just kind of a brawl. Yeah, definitely a brawl. That's a good way to break it down. Which is, I mean, as much as it's Triple H and I chirp him for little shit like that around the ring, mm. Triple H is an amazing wrestler. Undertaker, mm. he really thrives in that brawling style. Yeah, you know what I mean. That that's his wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. He's got the big moves like that leg drop that he does on the uh, on the apron is is oh. is and always will be to me one of the craziest things that he does. Oh yeah, um, which we've seen him deliver in this match too. Yeah, he was rocking the Dan Aykroyd hair, <laughs> real nice. <laughs> yeah, jet black. I kept saying that man. I don't know what it was, but I was like, why does he look like Dan Aykroyd right now for some reason? Just his hair, and it's the Undertaker. I shouldn't be saying that. It's but hilarious. It was it was yeah. It was definitely funny in the moment. A lot of strikes from Taker. Yeah, like you said, a lot, and even JR brought it up throughout the commentary. He said, you know what? This isn't going to be that catch as can. This is going to be just a fight. Just, yeah, a fight, a brawl, a street fight. I want to know how many times these guys said, fuck you, while they were fighting. <laughs> just like in the moment, you know what I mean? Fuck you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Just like, or at the beginning when they had that face to face. Oh, yeah. How many F bombs were dropped back and forth? You stupid motherfucker. Yeah. And that back and I. Not that that's all oh, we love swearing. It's just that's emotion and raw character no, and, raw, sure. and raw emotion between two wrestlers. So, yeah. And it's the type of shit that you see when you watch two boxers or two UFC fighters that actually don't like each other. Yeah. That you're going to see shit talking. Mm-hmm. It's part of the sport of combat fighting yeah. or simulated combat fighting for that matter. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I love the moment in the match when Taker kind of stopped, looked around at the crowd. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you could see him looking directly at specific, not specific people, but, like, not just panning the crowd. He was looking at people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He could tell his eyes were moving from person to person, and then he kind of just looked around, and he goes, I don't need you. Yeah. I don't need you. I'm like, this guy is gold. Yeah. You know what I mean? Gold. Yeah. Random question. Did him and Hogan ever really go at it? Taker? You know what's crazy is that I believe when well when he won the title he won it from Hogan this the month earlier. Oh, so there you go. Yeah. So they did. I want to see that mm-hmm. because I want to, and especially that it's that version of Hogan because that reminded me of Hogan mm-hmm. and the rope. Yeah, that same type of just raw, just like psychology and storytelling with with movement and stuff like that. I don't know. I. I would love to see those two go at it and tell a good story. I mean, not anymore because yeah. I know WWE still might try and do something like that. Yeah, but okay. I, uh, yeah, it would be it would be cool. That's definitely one to for us to check out. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Is it a good match? Is it's not just one of these little one off SmackDown things? Like was no, it, it was at Judgment Day. Oh, yeah. perfect. Okay, they it was showed in the promo. Yeah, yeah they yeah. showed the the promo highlights of it. That's we might have to go as we do at the look back. We might have to go a little bit farther back because I might need to see how Hogan won that belt to begin with. 
Because mm. I don't know if I've seen that. Or if I have, I forgot. Do you want to know? Uh, or we'll save it. We'll save it. We'll save we'll it. Save yeah. it. <laughs> I'm sure the listeners right now are too early. If they don't know, they're like, tell me, don't. <laughs> yeah. And then the ones that know are like, just fucking tell them. What about <laughs> fucking Triple H when he went for that pedigree and the reactions of the people? You know what I mean? You want to talk about how over he was? Dude. What did I say to you? I think you, at this th- at this point, you probably thought The Rock was coming out. I did. Yeah. He went for the pedigree, and then I see the crowd go nuts, and I'm like, oh, The Rock's coming. They know The Rock's coming. Or I thought The Rock was coming. So I thought, like, you know, sometimes yeah, you'll yeah. see the guy walking yeah. down, and they don't cut to him yet. You just see everybody looking left or looking right. Yep. I thought that's what was happening. No. It was just, they were going fucking ape shit for the pedigree. Yeah. And the fact that he, you know, kicked him and pulled the arm, locked the arms over. Craziness. Wait, Craziness. Yeah. Not yeah. something you'd see nowadays. No. I don't, not for anybody, not for AJ, not for Seth, not for anybody yeah. in WWE because whoever, you know what I mean? I, think of another, something like that. I can't. Maybe the John Cena FU, maybe, obviously the Hogan leg drop and then maybe the Sweet Chin music and a stunner, but there's like very select few single moves mm. that can garner the reaction that that did from yeah, the I don't crowd. Think there, yeah, there's not much. There but, really yeah. isn't. You know, stunner, leg drop, people's elbow, those those top guys, Mount Rushmore type people, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. figure four. Um, but nobody in current day. Um, what about the nice, um, what's your favorite move called? I always forget it. The catapult. <laughs> that buddy, catap- the, I always the, forget that. The catapult <laughs> into the into the corner. Into I just, old Earl. Into Earl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was in, yeah, it was yeah. into Earl. Um, I just love that move because it's, it. if you can watch that move, then you can watch anything in professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. Because it takes a lot to buy into that. The catapult. Because it's very, like if I gave you a catapult, you're not like... (laughs) (laughs) You you know what? I've never looked at it like that. I'm always just like, okay, I'm just like... "Eh." I just, that's the, I like that type of move because it's like you can show that to somebody and just be like, all right, if you can buy into this, then you're pretty much okay. Because it's it's just, that's what I love about wrestling is you just kind of forget about everything else and it's just like, Okay, in this universe, mm-hmm. in this world, yeah. this stuff exists. Yeah. Okay? So when he does this, and there's no black eye, and there's no blood after 10 punches to the fucking skull, mm-hmm. you know, that's just how it works here. So yeah. in in this world, when he pulls him back and his feet land on the ground, he's forced to jump. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, the guy who's being catapulted has to jump over. So yeah. it's, I don't know, it's one of those things that really just helps with the buying in of pro wrestling. Oh, for sure. Uh, so the ref gets knocked out. The fans are going nuts, as per usual. Because um, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, and then we didn't talk about Heyman on commentary a little bit. Oh, yeah. He was on there, and he was kind of sitting on the... Yeah, he was kind of sitting h- halfway on the desk. It was pretty joke. Looking right at the JR and Lawler, just the, well, pretty much. Well, and what I kept thinking is, because commentary so much revolved around looking at the monitor. Yeah. And I was wondering, I was like, how much he, How much is he really looking at the monitor right now? I don't think he's looking at the monitor. He wasn't even looking in the ring. He was like just talking to them, <laughs> which I love because he's kind of saying like, hey, I don't care who it is. Brock Lesnar is going on to win. My guy's going to be the WWE yeah. champion. It doesn't matter. And I mean, it, he, he was, so <laughs> yeah. he wasn't wrong. Um, <laughs> how about Nick Patrick coming out for the the one-two kick out and, the, oh, and then yeah, Undertaker yeah. just gives him a hard right to the face. Yeah. Fuck you, Nick Patrick, pretty much. Yep, pretty much. Um, And then at this point, I don't I might have been just before this when they were kind of both laid out on the ground. Yeah. Um, we didn't talk about it before the match, but Triple H on his way to the ring had been stopped by kind of all of the NWO two sweet brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, that, well, the bootleg. That's my album. It's by myself, solo. Yeah, the, boot, the bootleg NWO. Exactly. <laughs> so. And Triple H was basically giving him that. Yeah. He was saying, uh, yeah, it's good to see you guys. But he didn't really say like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll call you or I'll call. I'll, yeah. I'll get, he wasn't, he didn't seem too down with it. No. You know what I mean? Because he was a baby face. Yeah. So, and this was that weird Shawn Michaels in the NWO. And they told him, if you need us. Just throw it up. Throw it up, brother. Throw the bat signal in the air. <laughs> throw the bat signal. <laughs> So I was expecting that when they were kind of both laid on the ground here, I thought maybe we were going to get a two sweet from Triple H on the yeah, ground, yeah. you know, similar to, to like a, a, a pay-per-view I watched recently with Vengeance mm-hmm. 2004 yeah. with Triple H and, and him kind of calling to Eugene, Eugene, yeah. Eugene, come help. Decent little pay-per-view. Yeah. That Randy Orton edge match. Thank you for making me watch that. Cause oh, nice. yeah. Definitely worth, worth the watch. But back to this match. Yep. Um, Nick Patrick gets knocked out. 
The if rock you runs. Smell. Yeah, if you <laughs> smell. I don't know if you're going to like me for this one. Uh-oh. But why did we have his music? It's, I don't know. What do you mean? I feel like that was just not needed. He should have just ran in? He should have just ran in. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like the, the music was just maybe to get the pop. and It was just unnecessary, mm. in my opinion. That was the first thing I thought of. Mm-hmm. And that might be a, a Wade Kellerism mm-hmm. and me listening to too much of that type of shit and yeah. thinking about these types of things. But that was the first thing I thought was, your music does not need to be hit right now. You can just run down to the ring. That's my album. And that, well, yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> you, might, you want me to play it again? This has become a theme. That's my album. It's by myself, solo. <laughs> but, uh. It's Rocky. I guess, yeah. No, trust me. We're working on that Rocky theme, too. <laughs> all, I, all I have right now <laughs> for this one is this. I am the king! And that doesn't really represent a, a babyface Triple H in <laughs> any way. So I didn't really want to play that one. But. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't enjoy the no music. I liked the segment and everything that happened and him chasing away Paul Heyman. Mm. But but you're right. I think it was a lot to do with the reaction to let the people know. Doo-doo-doo. Hey, it's the Rock, and then he's coming to save. Everybody day. goes. It's just like the glass shattering. Yeah. He kind of had that. If you smell, mm-hmm. was that equivalent of that? And you want those pops. I I can't. I don't blame them one bit for mm-hmm. wanting to get the pop out of the crowd and get that reaction. Yeah. And uh, he went right, yeah, he did go right for Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman was talking a lot of shit, and The Rock... Obviously was listening. He was listening, so Heyman quickly got out of there. The Rock scurried him out. Yeah. And then The Rock jumps on commentary. For a little bit. For a there little, wasn't much For left. a quick second. For a yeah. quick second. And he said, he thought, he said, I was listening, I heard it. And uh, we had Taker, you know, coming yeah, over. you kind of do Don's, Don's spots <laughs> here on the rest so of this. Taker coming over, grabbing the grabbing the old steel chair. Actually, before he grabbed the steel chair, what did he do? He turned and he booted the rock. Like, yeah. Just out of nowhere. <laughs> he just boots the rock. Totally kicked the rock right into the Spanish announce table. A couple of young ladies were pretty upset. You know well, I mean? how about how crazy? <laughs> we didn't talk about it. Those young ladies there in the front row behind Jerry and King were going batshit crazy for the rock. Oh, yeah. They love When he rock. came out in the first place. They couldn't believe that they were three feet away from the rock. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> think, you know what's crazy? What's that? Is think about how crazy they were going. Yeah. And then think about how much bigger of a star The Rock is now. Oh, yeah. And yeah. they were going nuts yeah. as if they're in front of, like, Mick Jagger. Mm-hmm. And not to say, not to take anything away from Rocky back then, because mm-hmm. he was huge. Yeah. But within that, you know, pro wrestling bubble, which, again, was more mainstream at that time. Yeah. But still, like, now The Rock is, I, I can't think of a bigger celebrity. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, so After that. We, yeah, sorry, the he, chair. The he chair. booted him. We had Taker grab a chair. At this point, uh, The Rock was getting up. You know what I mean? It was pretty quick. He got up, stopped him with the chair. The Mm -hmm. Rock now has the chair. He went to hit Taker. Taker moved. And guess who was in the way? Good old. The game. I am the game! Smack. Smack down, laid on his head, and fuck, the boy was busted open at this point. Triple H was busted right, right open. And, uh... Then we had the guys kind of get into the ring with some action. We had The Rock get into the ring with the boys. You know what I loved about this part of it? The Rock goes, like, he went like he was going for the people's elbow. He realized he didn't have his elbow pad. And he went, ah, and he takes off his shirt and he threw his he shirt threw into his the shirt? crowd. Yeah. I didn't pick up on that. Yeah. That's awesome. So it was fucking cool. So he realized in that, yeah, I, I did, the not, elbow. did not pick up on that. That's wicked. Hits the elbow on, uh, on Taker. And then I think at that point, that's when The Rock... Uh, the Rock was going to leave. Yes. And then he left the rest to Triple H to try and take care of. Which, unfortunately. Unfortunately, he couldn't because uh, old Taker <laughs> hit the old uh, family yeah, jewel. Kicked him in the nuts. <laughs> and then what? Like, I, I the, the. He, well, he kicked him in the jewels, rolled him back. And then, yeah, similar to the, the Molly Holly, honestly, and the Trish Stratus match yeah, yeah. in the sense that, yeah, he got him in just a quick roll up like that and grabbed the tights, one, two, three. Mm-hmm. I felt it to be a little bit underwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. Rest in peace. You know, like yeah. it's just, I don't, not that that's the same Undertaker, but. <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, what how I looked at it was, you know, hey, homeboys rocked. From the from the shot, he's busted. He's probably That's already fair. pretty, you know. And then to get sacked too. And yeah, the low blow. I and th- then the the tights was a good reassurance that hey, you're not gonna kick out. Yeah, 
This is so it. That, like, here, I got you. So yeah, underwhelming, but a lot of reasons. Yeah. And a lot of like thought out process as to why mm. Triple H wouldn't be able to kick out. And then it's also good for Triple H because he doesn't look like he's getting beat yeah. too easily. Mm. I would have liked to see, and maybe now before we get to the end of the show, what happened post-match here, Don? Because we had a lot of attacks from all three guys <laughs> fighting each other. We had The Rock come in and do the people's elbow to Undertaker. Yeah. Triple H get up and pedigree The Rock, and yeah. then The Undertaker get up and choke slam Triple H. Yeah. As like I said when we were watching it live, I was happy that Undertaker was the last one to be standing here. If it would have been The Rock, I got to be honest, I would have been pissed. Yeah. Because he didn't even wrestle on the fucking show. Yeah. So for the whole show to kind of have him be the one standing tall at the end of it, you got to be telling a pretty specific story if that's the case. Yeah. So, I don't know. No, I agree with that totally. It it made sense that, you know, it all came back to the champ. Exactly. It was just a good, like I said, one of my biggest themes with this pay-per-view is is good storylines. Yeah. And every match having meaning in the end turning out usually, if not almost every, if not every match had the the better result, the one that I think should have happened yeah. to kind of benefit both wrestlers in the end. No, for sure. But yeah, so give me some of your knowledge on post King of the Ring 2002 because I'm curious. Yeah. And then we can get into the good old uh, moments of the night. Oh, yeah. Well, so all this being said, I mean, we've talked about it several times on the show. We know that ultimately Brock Lesnar wins that title at SummerSlam. at SummerSlam from the rock spoiler alert sorry if i should have said that first but you know uh, let's hope here we not, are <laughs> so uh actually leading into that the rock was the man that he beat for the title so okay. how did we get to that point exactly so how does the title get from trip or from undertaker so this to the pay-per-view rock. took place in june right yes june 23rd 2002 yes so that left us with july july was an open slot and it was interesting that you brought up the triple threat factor because it was a triple threat. Yeah, I but knew the it. one man who was left out was the game. So who was what? Yeah, in that so this triple threat match that takes place a month later is between Undertaker, Rock, and Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle throughout that few week period finagled earned, his way into his way storyline. Finagles his way, being you know a McMahon guy getting a win over Hogan, doing some things maybe. Yeah, I don't yeah. know the exact. Oh, for sure, for Bits sure. of it, maybe even against Triple H. Probably oh, okay. not, probably okay. not. SmackDown Raw. Um, but yeah, that's what it was, those three. And then The Rock wins the triple threat. And it's so weird that, you know. And do you, what was that at? Like a No Mercy? Vengeance. Or? Oh, it was Vengeance. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so The Rock holds the title for like, you know, less than a month, pretty much. <laughs> like he wins yeah. it to pass it to Brock. Just which, for that reason. And, yeah. then, and then does he go to Hollywood? Yeah. S- soon after that? Right, like he's not, that's it. Like he's gone after that for a, a And bit. then did he ever, what was like the longest he came back after that? Because that like, was the first time he left, right? Yeah, that was like the first, I think, big time he left. And then when he came back, yeah, roughly, this is just, I mean, a bit off topic for this round table, but, or this, this look back show, but how long was he back? Like, was he ever back again for two years straight or a whole year? Or was it like come back, do a storyline, and then leave? Yeah, I'm pretty sure now that I'm thinking about it, I think it was just come back to a storyline because so that's so this is it. Like that SummerSlam when he lost to Brock was like basically the end of full time Rock in WWE. Yeah, l- let me think about this for one sec. I'm pretty sure because so yeah, he loses to Brock, goes away, comes back around. This is all leading into WrestleMania 19. Yeah, comes back, fights Austin, Hollywood yeah, Rock, Hollywood Rock. As yeah, that makes sense. Does that match? Does another little program after, leaves again. And and that's pretty much it. Yeah, when did he, I can't even think come of Come back probably back for a sure. god cameo here and there, and then he didn't come back probably again for real. And oh, he did a one-off at 20, right? I was yeah. just I was just about to and say that. That would have been it. With McFoley, yeah. and then again with John Cena and yeah. stuff later. And yeah, so this was, yeah. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. I never really knew definitively that that was when that kind of yeah. ball was switched, torch was passed, yeah. you know. I think, honestly, man, I don't want to get into that too much. We'll save that for another look back. But I think even throughout that match, like, people start booing. I think The Rock kind of gets booed because people know. Because even tonight on the King of the Ring, yeah, I did see a sign for a quick second. I almost wanted to rewind, but it said something about go to Hollywood. It's, it was something go back against The Rock. Go to Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we know you're go Like, something, the mummy, some type of reference. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I've actually never seen that. Or the Scorpion King. Yeah, don't waste your time. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. The CGI in the Scorpion King is so bad. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I've watched, like, visual effects artists break that movie down on YouTube, um, and it's not... Uh, one last thing I will give you 
while we're on the rock in Hollywood and the whole main event. And did this, you give us the main event of the of the final match? I don't know if we got. Well, that's what I was getting to right okay, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry, sorry. So uh, this was the longest one of the night. Uh, main event, Triple H, t- title match, <laughs> WWE title. Sorry. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> 23 minutes and 44 seconds. <laughs> wow. So was second the Eddie and, and, and Ric Flair? Six, yeah. 16 minutes, I think you said it was? Yep. Eddie. Yep. Eddie and, and then Flair. what would have been third? Angle, Hogan? Angle and Hogan. Nope. Third would have been, I think it was Van Damme and Jericho. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That, that was a long. Either way. They were close. I thought this pay-per-view was really good. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we should do it now or if we should do the memorable moments of the night. I'll, maybe I'll put the ball in your court and you can decide. Are we going to do memorable moments, or are we giving our melters? What's first? I think it's time to hit the drop. I think it's time. Moments of the night. Dun, dun. Moments of the night. Dun, dun, dun. There you have it, my friends. Yes, yes. Moments of the night. These are special moments that we remember from the pay-per-views that we look back at. Are you going to remember them in one week, one year, two days, ten years? Basically, what are some of the moments that stick out from this pay-per-view um, that you're going to remember? And stand the test of time. Exactly. What's if when I ask you or when I ask Donovan in a year or or even in a week, King of the Ring 2002, what pops into your head? All right. Well, for myself, I'm gonna. You normally go first. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna give you a, a little, a cup, a couple here. I got a couple before I get to my main, my main one. I That's good. Say. It's you're like yeah. me for once. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I normally have honorable mentions, and then I got usually three. Yeah. So you know what? And I guess I'll. This will be an honorable mention. An honorable mention would be probably. Most definitely to this arena and the chair, like okay. the, the gigantic the chair. chair at the end. Is that way. number one, or are you going down from three up to one? No, this is an honorable mention. Okay, yeah. cool. So sorry, I just I'm visual. I need that in my head. The chair, because man, I know in my head that this only took place twice. Yeah, and even the setting at the last one was slightly different with the glass along the sides. Yeah, which where Kurt Angle. Some people yeah. had some fucking crazy shit go down. That they did, but I know that was only twice, and I. I'm good with my dates and shit. So I know that this one takes place with the chair. Another one attached to that as an honorable mention would be Brock Lesnar winning the King of the Ring. Whenever you tell me King of the Ring 2002, Brock is one of the things that pops right in my head. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense, obviously. Yeah. Um, that being everything that even we kind of debated about earlier, like it stands out to me when I think of Brock Lesnar and winning because I don't remember anything of Brock doing doing a king gimmick or anything like doing that. things with the crown or it was just, you know, I know that 2002 we got Brock Lesnar was the king of the ring. And this is really the beginning of, a, you know, what was to be a huge year for him. Fuck yeah. Um, and career, obviously. Moment of the night, match of the night. Maybe Doesn't have to be match me. of the night. No, I don't but wanna... they kind of they kind of tie in. Okay, I just don't want for the listener's sake. I don't want them to think necessarily that moments are matches. This is uh, Kurt Angle, Hulk Hogan, man. This is a standout to me. That's awesome. Yeah, because That's awesome. when we were when we were watching this for a second, I was like, you know what? I, I was thinking about it, and I'm like, yeah. And then when Kurt Angle cut that promo, I was like, yeah, you know what? This is it. I knew it. This is where that match takes place. Like I said earlier when we were talking about it. I don't think these guys tangoed up a lot. I don't think it happened a whole lot. No. This, I've always remembered this being a like a well put together match. It's something I've watched a few times like throughout my wrestling fandom, I guess. Yeah, you could yeah say. No, that's a good way to put it. Um, so yeah, man, it stands out for me. Kurt Angle, Hogan, the, the buy-in factor like we talked about, man. I think that goes to show you how, how even though it was like early for Kurt Angle too. Yeah how you viewed him you know what i mean the fact that you like he he could beat like you he could beat hogan hogan and, yeah. could beat him like you know what i mean and just it how could go good either the match way. the match was just so good so for me my moment of the night yeah probably is going to be the whole picture of kurt angle hulk hogan yeah and yeah that ankle lock locked in with hogan tapping out that fucking wig too yeah shout out to the wig and it's still so weird to see kurt angle freaking out about the fact that he's bald because it just looks like normal kurt angle running around grabbing his head right especially for someone like myself who didn't see you know haired kurt angle wrestle 
Um, but yeah, so I'll go my turn, I guess. Now, honorable mentions, like I always do, one of them is going to be Eddie Guerrero, Ric Flair, just because that's the match itself is, is an honorable mention. And then the pyro in the set. So similar to you, hmm. it was the amount of pyro. The yeah. length really got me here. I want to say it was like a 15 set. Then that's 15 Mississippis is a lot. Mm-hmm. Like I want to say it was almost 15 seconds of straight pyro, which led to a lot of smoke at the beginning, which led to some nostalgia for me and you and, and some enjoyment of the beginning of the show. Um, number three is the one-off matches. Mm-hmm. Is is the, the Eddie Flair, the Brock RVD, the Kurt Angle, Hogan, you know what I mean? Even the, 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 well, I guess Undertaker Triple H isn't a one off, but you know what I mean? Yeah, Some yeah. of the, the matches at this show that were just one, Jamie Noble and Hurricane, I don't yep. know how many times they went at it, but especially those big three Eddie Flair, Brock RVD, and Angle, mm. Angle Hogan. Um, number two is your number one. It's Angle Hogan. Okay, as much nice. as I, that is a part of my number three, the reason it's number two yeah. is as bad as it is to say, it's not because of tonight yeah. and today and this look back of us watching the show in this sense it's when i watched it with mike d and how much i was bought in and how much me and mike d were freaking out about the fact that we thought kurt angle was going to lose to hogan you know what i mean in the king of the ring or at the king of the ring pay-per-view so that alone is a big deal and then i mean i know i genuinely try and not have too many negatives but number one by far for me is the no king of the ring in the main (laughs) event like it's the fact it's it's not even the no king of the ring in the main event i shouldn't say that i should take it back it's the not treating the King of the Ring tournament mm. as well as I think it should have been treated at a pay-per-view called King of the Ring. Mm. Like I said, if this was a No Mercy or whatever and the King of the Ring was culminating at the No Mercy, totally different story. I feel totally different about it, but in this scenario, it wasn't my favorite the way that they that it went out. And I, I'm i big in... the When I think about memorable moments and what I'm going to remember, I'm also going to remember what you said. When every time somebody says King of the Ring 2002, I'm going to think Brock Lesnar. Yeah. That's what's going to pop into my yeah. head. But now watching it in its entirety and breaking it... Excuse me, breaking it down and taking notes and following it the way we do and talking about it, that way that the King of the Ring tournament itself was treated yeah. is going to... Excuse me, that was weird. Is going to stick out a little bit more than... You know what I mean? The fact that it wasn't the main event. Yeah. You know? I yeah. don't know. So those are the memorable moments, moments of the night and everything. Can I get a can I get a melty? Can I get a melty? I guess we gotta go back to that now. Yeah. I'm yeah. happy. I you well you said what it was first or second. Uh you want me to go first? Sure. Yeah. I'm Let's gonna give this one a three point five. That's crazy. A three point five. That's insane. What, <laughs> is that a bad insane no, or, no, or a good insane? I I'm not basing this off what you said. I was literally thinking of the same rating. 3.5. Yeah. Because I, w- I had, I got to be honest. I'll tell you why too. Yeah. I was about to write four mm-hmm. on my sheet, but then this King of the Ring stuff and where uh, it was placed and... Triple H. That was, that's what did it for Triple you. H, that's a little bit, you. you know what I mean? It, it, not my favorite. So I, so I had to give it a 3.5. And then I, honestly, I was starting to look at it and I don't want to sound like a mark, but I was starting to look at it in the way that a Meltzer does in the sense that I have to break this up against everything when I make my when I rate when I give my number here right now this isn't just like this is the only wrestling pay-per-view ever made let's let's how good is it this Mm -hmm. is all you get to choose from it's like no I kind of have to take a look back like we do at the other 10 to I don't even know how many look backs we've now done and how many Meltzers we've given how many we should preface that for the new listeners that are that are checking out the show Meltzers is our version of stars yeah so Meltzers kind of the legend and we just kind of well, I don't want to call him a legend. He's kind of the veteran of the wrestling coverage, and he created the whole stars, apparently. So we kind of named the stars after him. So, yeah, 3.5 Meltzers. Yeah. Um, the reason, same, man, I give it a 3.5 for the reason being that, that we have to look at this when we're comparing this to everything. Yep. All the wrestling that we've watched, all the stuff we look back at, other things like that. Hey, and all that being said, man, 3.5 is a fucking solid rating because I think if I was, me and you look back at other things from this year, ninety percent of it's probably going to be three point five to a four, if not a five. In like, two thousand two, you mean? Yeah, okay. I don't think anything from from this era was is lo- probably going to get a low rating from myself. No, definitely, probably definitely I, I don't, not. I can't say that for sure until we watch it all, but yeah, most likely you can probably say that with a safe safe yeah. bet. Mm-hmm. Safe bet is for sure. Um, anything else from this show that you want to get into, Don, or talk about, or get off your chest, or? Well, Say about uh, King of the Ring 2002. You know, we didn't get the coronation from Brock. So, uh, you know, I, King Don, uh, it's been an honor. You know, I want to thank uh, the people. 
It's my album. You know what I mean? It's my album. And uh, let's ride it out with a little bit of my boy. Thanks for uh, listening to the Pro Wrestling Look Back podcast, guys, tonight, today, tomorrow, yesterday. Whenever you check out the show, we appreciate it very much. And this was a good one, Don, as, as the Look Back show always is. But this one was one of my favorites I think we've ever done and sat down and talked about. And maybe not my favorite one to watch, yep. but definitely one of my favorite ones to record. So thank you for listening to the show. And if you don't already, go hit us up on Instagram and Twitter at PWLookBack on both of those. You can subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, and YouTube. Hit the five stars. We'd really appreciate that. It helps us get more listenership, more views, more everything, and more just more stuff. I don't know. We'd appreciate it. And if you like the show, it, it, it means a lot from us. So thank you for that. But if you want to get in contact with myself or Donovan, you can hit us up on Instagram and Twitter. Mine is at Salsa on Instagram and Twitter. And Donovan? My Twitter is at JustDawn44. Do you want to give me the Instagram too or no? You keep that one private. That is not for today. Not for today. King Don does not share. Just check out the PW Look Back uh, account for Donovan's Instagram. I'm sure it's on there somewhere. Um, with all that being said, like I said, check out teespring.com slash Pro Wrestling Look Back Podcast for some merch, t-shirts, cups, and a new t-shirt on the way. Stay tuned for that. And that's it, eh, Don? I think that's everything. That's it. Thank you for checking out the Look Back Show. I'm Nick. And I'm King Don signing off, telling you to stay classy.